All right, guys, with that said, let's do it. Resume Expedition. I like it. It's not start game. It's not continue game. It's Expedition. That's cool. I don't think we have seen that yet, Cyborg. No. Oh, I forgot. I've been playing this game with a controller because uh, it's generally better for the flight controls versus using a keyboard and mouse. Oh, no. I have this problem almost every time I start this game. <laughs> I'm not pressing anything and it's doing this. I think it's because I forget to start the game before I start the controller. So let me exit the game and restart it. Actually, I think I have to quit the game completely, to be honest. I, I think it might be a bug in the game. I'm just using a standard Xbox controller, and every time I start the game without the controller started, if I start the controller next, <laughs> then it causes that problem. It's really weird. So essentially, we the things we have to figure on Ember Twin and things to find on Bramble and Giant's Deep. Oh, does that happen in other games too? I've never noticed it before. This is the first game I've ever seen that with. But yeah, I would assume maybe it's like a Unity engine thing or some way they set up the API controls for the game. It just has that problem. Let's see. And uh, Ender, you think that's the best place to start? I don't even know what planet that's on, but I'm excited to find out. Okay. I think we should be good. Let's do this. Perfect. All right. We don't have the control problem anymore. <laughs> so you're going to go risk taking a shower, wrapping hand in garbage bags to do that. Oh, it's still not that good therapy. That's a hassle. Well, good luck. I hope you keep it dry and safe. Okay. So first thing we'll do is we'll check our uh, ship's log and see what we see. I might have been there, Ender. I'm not sure. I guess I could check in the log and that would tell me. Okay, so if we just look at the different planets. So Ember Twin, I think you were saying that's one of the things we need to figure out. We look at this, we got a few things. Oh, the high energy lab is, boom, one of the things listed. So the high energy lab can only be accessed by a path from the Sunless City. And here's what we know about the Sunless City. The Nomai survivors who crashed on Ember Twin decided to seek shelter in the caves beneath their crashed escape pod. The Nomai discovered a promising long-term shelter site at the end of one of the passages beneath the escape pod. Chert thinks the lack of surface ruins means the Nomai must have lived somewhere underground. There is a path leading to the high energy lab from the Sunless City, and I found trail markers for the Sunless City, but the path is blocked. That part I don't remember about the path being blocked, but we gotta check that out. There's also this thing about the angler fish fossil so we found a cave with an angler fish fossil inside that's like a huge fish that can eat us up but the opening is only big enough for my scout the nomai learned how to evade angler fish theoretically at least by studying an angler fish fossil they found on ember twin so that i don't know what the solution is but yeah it looks like we got to find the sunless city again which we can actually i think we can mark it can't we maybe not I thought you could mark it, but I'm not sure. Christian, what's up, Christian? So there's a section in the Sunless City that leads to the lab. It's at the very bottom. So it's an early game run before the sand blocks out. Oh, so we got to go real quick. Hopefully it's not... I'm not losing time doing this. Um, do I have the Sunless City marked off? I don't think so. I assume it would have been con connected to this high energy lab. Northern Glacier. Sun Station? Okay, the Nomai built something called the Sun Station, but not everyone supported its construction. Maybe related? I don't know. I don't think we can actually put a marker there, so I'll just have to explore. We'll just find it the old-fashioned way. So that's on Ember Twin. If I remember right, somebody told me it's directly to the left once we launch. There it is. Got to be quick, but yeah, it's always going to be there. So if we have to get there early, my assumption is it's on Ember Twin and not the other one. Ash Twin, right? 
And it must be near the center if it fills up really quick with sand. So we probably want to start flying in here towards the center and see what we can find. I'm going way too fast. Slow down. Yeah, see, some pockets are already starting to fill up a little bit. Can I land here? I suppose so. <laughs> Let's try it. Okay, so we're already in these little holes. These holes, little pockets are filling up pretty quick. There's another little pocket. Uh-oh, here comes the sand. I, I assume it's going to be in one of these little pockets. We'll just check them all out. No, nothing in there. It's kind of hard to see some of these because of the lighting. Oh crap, here comes the sand. Don't run into that, John. I think that can kill you. I'm right on the edge of it. Oh no, I did a full 360. I didn't see anything. Okay, well, let's get in our ship and get out of here. Apparently, it's not right in the center. Or I was too slow and I already missed it. I'm not sure. Well, let's go back up to the surface and check that out. Okay, so it's where we found those writings initially. Let's kind of reorient myself. That is one tricky part about this game I found. Actually, I should refill my uh, my fuel and all that. There we go. Is when you take a break from this game, it's, for me anyway, with my memory, it's hard to remember exactly where everything is, what you were doing. Okay, this door remains closed. Uh, White Hole Station. This talks about the Sunless City. Raimi and I are running to this experiment We'll be running this experiment until one of us, specifically me, can prove the other wrong. So although it's inconvenient, the lab currently can only be accessed by the path from the Sunless City. Okay, that's what that's talking about. Viper Kitty, how are you doing? I did have a very nice Easter. It was pretty low-key. We just went to go see some family. And uh, the day after Easter, though, a mother-in-law came by with an Easter basket full of candy. <laughs> so now we have way too much chocolate in the house. How about yours? Uh, the High Energy Lab is now being used to design the Ash Twin Project. If you're here to help, or just to observe, be sure to use the Sunless City path to the lab. Inviting sand inside would disrupt our setup and could have enormous consequences. We realize this is an intriguing prospect, but the door must, be re must remain closed nonetheless. Okay, so we can't go this way. That door needs to stay closed. That is the High Energy Lab, but we need to find the... Sunless City to find the path into here. And there's the high energy lab down there. No, I don't think we've been there at all. And it's next to their escape pod. I wonder, we can find the escape pod using this, right? I think if we use distress beacons, we can find the escape pod. I guess a spe escape pod too. Looks like it's kind of this way, maybe. These planets are so small, it could be on like the other side of the entire planet to get there. Okay, let's keep kind of going this direction. Luckily, these Ember Twins are really small planets, so it's pretty easy to get around. Let's get up to the top. Okay, we're getting close. There it is. Okay, so from here, there should be a path to the Sunless City. So that was, that's their escape pod. They set up a distress beacon. I'm pretty sure we've already fully explored that escape pod. Maybe this is the path. I guess I could put that away. The last things we were doing here is we were trying to follow that... 
this guy, this piece of rock that was moving around all the time, we kind of figured out how that thing works. But let's try finding one of these, or keep following this path. Oh, I have to go through the escape pod. My bad. Okay, I was thinking it was near the escape pod. Funny thing. How's it going? See, I'm remembering to pause this time. <laughs> My goodness. A funny thing happened. How is it going? Funny thing. 25 months to the channel. That is incredible. Thank you so much, funny thing. Let me drop some tokens for you guys. How are you doing, funny thing? Thank you again so much. For that subscription, I appreciate it. What is new? How are you doing? What have you been up to? Jump in here. I really appreciate that. Some 25 months. Oh my gosh, these numbers are getting crazy high. And yours was good, Viper Kitty. We still have half a bag of Easter M&Ms left. Your husband and I are going to see his mom tomorrow. Oh, awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, just you got to find time with the family when you can, right? Okay, so I'm going to find that distress beacon again. It wasn't too far away. That's the wrong one. Where'd it go? There was one, <laughs> I remember. That's like way too far away. That's something else. There it is. Okay, it's on the other side. Let's let's get back up to the top of this planet. There we go. And doing good. You're getting out of mandatory quarantine on Friday. Yes, and getting your first vaccine shot the same day. Funny thing about that funny thing. Both you and Jumi have um, COVID vaccine shots on the same day. That's really awesome. So I'm wondering if I've actually been through there because I feel like I've already explored this as much as I can if there's a path through here. So these were both kind of dead ends. I know I read all of this stuff. Talks about their escape pod and their crash. Emergency escape hatch. Roost, keep moving, friends. There is nothing of interest at the end of this passage but rocks. Yeah, I remember this. And while these rocks are interesting, they can wait until a less urgent time. <laughs> those are really interesting rocks. And they always have two doors. That's good, Ender Cyborg. I mean, if one door is not working, then you're stuck, right? It's like a school bus or something. You gotta have multiple exits. And uh, Malore, do not follow this tunnel to its end. Coleus and I will examine the horror that lies. Oh, wait, this is where we saw that skeleton of one of those things that they were studying. That's right. We already went that way. There's a few more notes around here. We found an enormous cavern at the end of this passage that appears promising. We believe we could construct long-term shelter there. The cavern uh, Malore found is a wise choice for shelter. Could one of you mark directions for the others to follow? This is the start of the path to the shelter site. I left directions to guide you there. Of note, we must hurry, as the path pathway there is filling with sand. Do not allow yourself to be buried by the sand. Make sure no one is lost. Okay, so this is probably the way I need to go, but I'm way too late on this playthrough. I bet if I keep going, we're gonna see it's already filled up with sand. So I guess we're going to have to restart this and then go down there as quickly as possible. Although I can kind of explore and see what we can find anyway. Yeah, like that could be it right there. I'm not sure. Oh, and there's some oxygen too, Ender. Oh, I might have missed that. But I don't think we're making it this playthrough anyway. It's definitely a time-based one. Uh, the path to the shelter is somewhat convoluted, so follow the instructions ahead closely. We can at least get ourselves kind of familiar with it, so we can speed run it next time. To reach the shelter site, walk forward until you meet the sandfall at the pit, then turn left. Continue to the room filled with rock column formations, and climb upward through the opening above them. The sand here is rising, so you must be cautious and swift. Okay, so walk forward until you meet the sandfall pit, turn left. Continue to the room with the rock column formations and go upward. So once we get here, turn left. I mean, so far we haven't been blocked. And then here's the rock formations. We go up here. Okay, so far so good. 
and fairy dew. Your mom and you were both fully vaccinated and I was finally able to see her after over a year. Oh, that is so cool, fairy dew. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, I mean, I did see my folks before all this happened, but no, that is awesome that you waited until you got vaccinated and everything. Good on you and I'm so happy you finally got to see them. Here we go, we got some more instructions. Uh, be cautious crossing the chasm ahead. The bridge and Melora and I crafted will do this job, but it isn't strong. Oh, I just realized, look at the sand. It stopped moving. So yeah, the game really does pause when you're reading these notes. Unless you move. If I move a little bit, the sand also moves. Uh, once on the far side, look for the tunnel hidden behind the falling sand. Follow it and you'll reach the shelter site. Okay, so cross the bridge. On the other side, look for the tunnel behind the falling sand. All right. So this is supposed to be the bridge. <laughs> There's no bridge left. And a tunnel behind the falling sand. So I go through here. There we go. You're doing well. There's only a little farther left now until you reach the shelter site. You can rest there. Hurry before the sand comes. I can't believe it's not already too late for me. Uh... Oh, this way, right? I'm guessing this way. Oh, I think I barely made that. So there's a couple directions to go. I'm guessing I need to do this one first. Unlock the door. Yeah, we've definitely never done this before. This is all new. Hey, ship log was updated. Of course, this is still filling with sand. But didn't they say that, that sand would cause problems with their experiments? I thought they would have tried to make this down. Oh, there's the head of one of those guys. Oh yeah, how did you say you breathe again, Cyborg? You have to find a tunnel, right? Which, I don't know that I'm finding that around here. With only 60 seconds left, I have to find one right now. Oh, there's some trees in here. Okay. That kind of looks like a tree, but it's more like just a root. Yeah, let's see if we can find that before we die. It's getting close. It might be where the room opened up. Oh, crap. How do I get out of here? I like the music here. Here we go. There's some trees. I'm coming for you. Oh no, I hit something. Crap. Oh, much better. Okay. Now, I want to go back. Because I wasn't done exploring that. There we go. Where did I come in? I came in from this direction. What does this say? Ah, Anglerfish Fossil Overlook is there. Ooh, chocolate or jelly beans? I'm going to go chocolate every time. But I, I like jelly beans, too. So the path is at the very bottom? Oh, I found it, yeah. Perhaps using those mechanisms. I did see it looked like there was something there. Is that sand actually filling? I don't know that it's actually moving. I don't think it is. I think that sand is just decorative. Maybe it's not piling enough to make a difference? <laughs> I like that. It's, it's not an opinion. Chocolate is objectively the correct answer. Some people just don't like chocolate. I don't understand it. Chocolate makes me happy, but to each their own, that's cool. And there's really nothing in here. I was hoping we'd find some kind of notes or anything. So we have to do the buttons towards a tree first. I always try to do that stuff last because it looks so obvious. But yeah, it seems like that's where the game wants me to go. So there's four of these things. There's the Angler uh, Fish Outlook. Stepping Stone District. Oh, does this open up a portal or something? High Energy Lab, yes. And I Shrine. Let's try the Energy Lab. What did that do? I'm curious what happened. 
And Mariano, long time no see. How are you doing? Welcome. And thank you for the bit. I appreciate that. Uh, should we build the sun station to power the Ash Twin project? Are there other ways to generate this level of power? Theoretically, yes. Practically, no. I can't imagine discovering them in our lifetimes. Aw, thank you again, Mariano. I understand this proposal is unsettling, but the Sun Station will be built if we hope to complete the Ash Twin project. I almost can't comprehend this as being suggested seriously. The purpose of the Sun Station goes against every standard we hold ourselves to and everything we believe in as a species. If we fail, and the probability of this is not insignificant, we will without question destroy ourselves, all life here, and the rest of the star system. I wish to protect these species. The potential annihilation of the entire star system is too severe a cost. We shouldn't build the sun station, no matter how badly we want the knowledge that comes with it. Oh no. I think they did it. You did it. I think they actually built the sun station, whatever they're trying to do, and is causing maybe our sun to go supernova, but I'm not sure. Hey, how's it going, Linz? Great to see you. How is it going? What's new? How you been? Let's see. Uh, fear of failure is a poor reason not to try. <laughs> if we wipe out the entire species, so be it. <laughs> if he dies, he dies. Uh, I believe, if we're cautious, the sound station will work. I believe in Pi. Oh, I've missed you too, Linz. How have you been? Anything exciting going on? What's up? I'm hearing about everybody in the community getting vaccinated, and it's just so awesome to see. Um, poke. I hope it's poke. It could be poke, poke. I don't know. I'm deeply honored. Adea, I comprehend your position. However, if we aren't all but certain that Sun Station will not cause destruction once we built it, then I won't support the station's use. Oh, there's another one here. Unsurprisingly, Adea, I disagree. We're pushing a possible new technology further than ever before. That, in my experience, is the defining characteristic of our species. So yeah, they just want to keep learning and trying new things, but I think they may have reached a little too far. And I know our sun is about to explode. What if they actually caused that? Oh, I really appreciate that, Mariano. How have you been? What's going on? And Viper Kitty. Let me pause real quick. Uh, I remember three years ago, Easter, on the same day as April Fool's Day, you remember thinking, oh no, that means Easter pranks. Thanks to my father-in-law, I nearly fell victim to, oh no, you almost got bean boozled. That would be terrible if you weren't expecting it. I've only ever done bean boozled as like a joke kind of thing with Andy. Oh crap. The sand is still coming up quick. Um, so we, we switched... That thing, I wonder if it did anything over here. Oh, my Easter was really chill. Um, we went to go visit uh, some family. And then the day after Easter, actually, um, my mother-in-law came by with a bunch of candy we didn't need. So we're trying to get through that right now. Solanum. I don't know why everyone says the eye is important. They say it brought us to the solar system. But is that good? Dad told me lots of Nomai died when our clan came here. What if the eye isn't something good? What if the eye wanted that to happen? Oh, that's a creepy thing to think. So my guess, Cyborg, is that once I enabled the way to... What was it? The trailhead for that lab? I'm assuming that it opened up like a gate or something that we can like teleport there? Perhaps? And this place is filling up. Oh no. There's a bunch of this stuff here. Can I get through here without getting killed? Nope. Look at that. Um, let me equip my launcher. Yes, if we take pictures, that's all dangerous. We can't go in there. Maybe I can go above it. Oh, here's a way in. There we go. Oh, we found another gate. Maybe this will take us there. Where is this taking us? Is this the same room? Kind of looks like the same room. I'm not sure. <laughs> All this area kind of looks the same. 
Okay, I'm at this. So if you can't tell, the sand is quickly rising, and eventually we're going to get caught off from everything and just suffocate in this place. Oh, yeah. Wow, I can't see any of that now. Okay. Oh, wait. Does that mean now that I found the thing to activate the lab that I can go back to that original lab entrance and it'll be open? Is that what that did? I'm trying to see if there's a way up there. Oh, it doesn't look like it. Oh, no. I've depleted my fuel. I'm a goner. Oh, they were light switches? My bad. I thought it was going to open up like a teleporter or something. And it said the only path is... Maybe this is the path. I'm hoping this is it. <laughs> they were just light switches? Oh, it lit up the path for me. Is that what it was? Like, you, you flip it to that and it, the pa it opens up a path or lights a path to that area? Oh, uh, we're so dead. I think I wasted too much time. <laughs> it's already filled up with sand. Well, in that case, let's go ahead and just let the sand consume us. Not much more we can do. Yeah, we'll have to get here much quicker so I can get down here and knock that out. And see, some of the flavors of Bean Boozled were just plain vile. Barf, Rotten Egg, Stinky Socks, Dead Fish. I mean, they're all pretty bad. The only Bean Boozled flavor I think I didn't mind was... Was, oh, I can meditate. I forgot all about that. That's in the start menu, right? There we go. Well, that squishy sound is kind of cool, though, too. <laughs> We're almost there. Um, toothpaste. I don't see the problem with toothpaste. Toothpaste doesn't taste bad. It's just minty flavor. Whenever I had the toothpaste as the bad one, I thought it was fine. It's like, cool. I got off easy. Like, Andy and I would, like, take turns. Trying to, oh, here comes a crush. Eww. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty gross. Yeah. I mean, the toothpaste flavor to me wasn't even bad at all. It, it could have been a normal flavor. I would have been like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, meditate while being crushed. <laughs> it was not going to stop the inevitable, but it's okay. Also, Linz, how was your Easter? What did you guys end up doing? Anything fun? Did you hunt for some Easter eggs? Okay, let's get there real quick and knock that out. So I'm basically, if you're unfamiliar with this game, you have 22 minutes or so to fly to these different planets, try to discover all these different secrets, and at the end of 22 minutes, you die. Doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing, you die. Because the sun is about to go like supernova and just wipe everybody out. So what I'm doing initially is I'm going to fly to these little planets over here. Those guys right there. It's interesting. There's actually two planets. And through their gravitational pull or something... Um, I didn't mean to click on that one. There we go. Through their gravitational pull or something, there's sand that goes from one planet to the next. It's kind of interesting. As it's happening, of course, it kind of blocks you off from certain areas. So you got to get there quick for certain places. Oh, Pac-Man 99 launches tomorrow on Switch, uh, but it's up for free download today. Not playable until tomorrow. That's really cool. Wait, is it a free game, Linz? I didn't realize that was a free one. I, I think that was like an exclusive to... Was it exclusive to like Stadia <laughs> for a little while? I vaguely remember something about Stadia with that. Okay, so to get there again, we need to find our way to their escape pod and then make our way through that. So let's go ahead and find that real quick. There's our buddy. Let's see, we can usually tell the escape pod pretty easily by this big blue light that kind of hovers over the ground. There it is. Okay, so let's land right here. I'll leave my, uh, oh, that was a rougher landing. I'll leave my ship up here. Then it won't be affected by the sand so much. That's really cool. I'm interested to see how that Pac-Man works. Um, I played a little bit of Tetris 99 on the Switch. That was a lot of fun. And I was never good at it, but I enjoyed it. 
Oh, it's only free today. I'll have to download that. Thank you for the heads up. Okay, so now I remember the path real quick. That's not the way. I think it's this way. Do not follow this tunnel. <laughs> Maybe it's this way. Yeah, this is it. Okay. So I should be able to get there pretty quick. And toothpaste was pretty good. Long clippings just tasted like veggies. Canned dog food kind of tasted like stale Salisbury steak. I don't think I've ever had the long clippings. That's an interesting one. So I should be able to do this without much intervention with the instructions. I'm hoping I can remember how to get there. I'm already lost. <laughs> Let me go back. Famous last words, right? Oh, wait. No, I'm, now I can't remember. It says, when you f get here, take a left. And then when you get to the area with the... These guys go up, right? Hey, welcome back, therapy. How did the shower go with your hand all bandaged up? Hoping you're able to keep it dry. Okay, yeah, I think we're going the right way now. You know, Fairy Dew, I was really interested to see how they created those flavors, because they really taste like what they say, and it's so gross. Like, that's got to be the worst job in the world, is being a tester for that kind of stuff, right? There we go. Okay, now we're making quick progress. Um, yeah, I think we just have to go up and over this. And back through here again. Move this guy over. So what I'm going to quickly do is change it to the high energy laboratory. So this is supposed to be a light. So something was supposed to have lit up to let me know how to get there. I mean, I see a little light right here. This is where I came from. Oh, we have to turn them all on. I was thinking you turn one on and uh, that takes you to that particular place. So that one was the Eye Shrine District. All right, yeah, they literally are just light switches. Okay, so where was that one? Trying to see which one we turned off. <laughs> okay, so that is near the bottom. Try not to die. Oh, what did you say, Sora? Um, I see you think it's only free today until release. No, I saw that one, Linz. Or do you mean the Rappy Android? <laughs> Better than when I said the first time I was thinking what the name said. Poor therapy. <laughs> Punctuation is important. <laughs> And I just, the way my brain was reading it as all one word, I just couldn't put it together. I'm so bad at Twitch names. That's part of the fun, though, isn't it? I feel like whenever there's somebody new, I almost pre-apologize, being like, um, if I'm wrecking your name, please let me know. Because I probably am. Oh, gosh. No, no. Oh, my lord, do you have to be fast. Okay, we got this. We got to speed run this, guys. Yours isn't too bad at all, Phantasma. Yours is good. When it's when it's one that is... I thought I was still going pretty fast, though. No, this is like literally you don't take a break. You just rush through everything. Um, I, I would say I probably get like 75% of the names correct. Which, in the grand scheme of things, isn't very good. <laughs> it's still one out of every four people I butcher their name. I just hope... And if any, if any of you guys, if I'm screwing up your name, let me know. Don't feel bad if I've been wrecking it for a year, two years, two months, whatever. Just correct me. Let me know. I'm never upset being incorrect. Just want to be better. Oh, and there's a shortcut to the city too, Cyborg. Quicker than what I was doing. I probably don't need it. I, I feel like if I had just gone a little bit quicker... I would have had that. 
Wait, I don't want to go to that one. There we go. Had the wrong twin selected. Oh, and tomorrow you're scheduled to take off the stitches. That is so exciting. Now, that probably won't make it any easier, like bathing and stuff, of course. That'll take a little bit more time to heal. Once you get the bandages gone, that'll be better. Hell's Kitchen. My wife watched that show, Viper Kitty. She loves those cooking shows. Oh, crap. <laughs> that planet came out of nowhere. Okay. Did you see it? It just came out of nowhere. <laughs> Tried to bite me. All right. Where is... This would help me if... Okay, there it is. I found it pretty quick. Sometimes you go the wrong direction on a planet and you just can't find the spot where you want to land. All right, go, go, go. I don't even care if my uh, ship is not properly landed. We just gotta go. Oh yeah, Cyborg. I bet if you know where that is, you have no problem at all getting through this. Okay, I'm pretty sure it was this way. And then we follow the path. Once we get to that turn, we take a left. It's a little bit past this. Okay. Yeah, we go here, take a left. We get to the stalagmites. Stalactites? I don't forget what the word is. Something like that, we go up. There we go. And this time I'm just going to hit the one switch. I don't think I need them all. And then go down. Okay, we cross here. You still can't move the fingers. Full healing in about three months. Oh, that is a long time therapy. But it's. I'm just happy that the doctor says that it's going to be better. That's like the most important thing. It takes some time. It takes some time. As long as it's going to get better. Let's see. Will you have to do PT? You mean the horror game, Phantasma? Wait, why aren't you going? Come on. Come on. I'm on the clock here. <laughs> come on, door. Oh, PT, physical therapy. That's what that was. I was thinking, wait, PT, the horror game? <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay, it's that one. Let's go down. There it is. There it is. The high energy lab. All right. Piece of cake. <laughs> Yeah, right, Phantasma? You confused me. I spent some time looking at the message, and now I die. We we might still have to go fast. Although, I think they said the high-energy lab was sealed off from sand. That's why the door was locked. So, maybe I don't have to worry about sand in here? No, looks like it's still coming down. Okay, I gotta get up and over those cactuses. Oh, no! Are you kidding me? Popped my suit. Okay. <laughs> Crap. Let's get out of here. How the hell do I get past that? Do I just go full force? Oh, we have to wait. I'm guessing... Waiting, would the sand eventually just stop coming? I don't know why that would happen. Would it get plugged up? Probably not, not another way through. You had stitches in your foot when you were 12, Viper Kitty. When you got the stitches removed after two weeks, you just felt the sensation of having laces removed. It's gross. That's my least favorite part about um, those. Oh, so you have to run once you get through the cacti? Oh, 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 nope. Oh, it's not happening. Oh, I think I know what you mean, Cyborg. Once I can't be pushed down anymore. Once the sand is above the cactus level, then I can walk through, right? But yeah, getting stitches. I've only ever had stitches on my arm. Once I got this weird looking mole removed, they wanted to make sure it wasn't cancerous. It wasn't, but it was like a decent sized hole and they patched it up, but as they were doing the stitches, just feeling all of my flesh being pulled together, I didn't like it. Didn't like it at all. Okay, so as soon as it reaches above the top of the cactus. We gotta go. 
<laughs> I know therapy. I'm like, PT. Wait, the Silent Hill game? No, John. Physical therapy. Okay, it's almost there. Almost there. Hold. Hold. There we go. Oh, no, I still got punctured. Okay. Quick break. <laughs> <laughs> Fairy do, oh my goodness, thank you so much for the subscription. That is two months now. Glad I found this community and thanks for the good entertainment, John Cadia. You are so welcome, Fairy do. I'm glad you found us too. It's so funny as we play different games and different categories, we keep meeting so many cool people and we just have such a cool, fun, wholesome community of just like really friendly, welcoming, supportive people. That's just what I want, and we keep bringing in more people like that. So I'm glad you found us, Fairy Do. Thank you again very much for the sub. Oh no, not at all. It was a good chance for me to take a break. That was perfect. <laughs> there we go. Let me drop that in there. And then before we keep running through the sand. Oops, wrong button. Let me bring those guys through. There we go. Okay. You have a chance to get those tokens. Thank you again very much, Fairy Do. And you and Artho, glad you guys both found us. Okay, ready, set. Okay, so just follow this blue electrical line or whatever this is as fast as we Oh, crap. That's a dead end. Um, oh, no. It's still filling up with sand. Okay, let's go this way. <laughs> We're still in trouble. We're not out of harm yet. Got to play close attention. Oh, here we go. Let's take this up. Nice, nice. Oh, a nice catch, fairy do. Oh, 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 no. Okay, this way. Goes back up again. Oh, but that one's only going down. I can't get past that. I guess I keep going this way then. Oh, that is so cool, Arthur. Yeah, I sometimes forget like what game we were playing or what the situation was when I first met um, some folks. So shout out again to Elegant Frost. Also a really fun, cool streamer. If you have not followed her channel yet, be sure you do. But I'm really glad that she raided me when you guys were there and we got to meet. Oh, I think that's the entrance. Okay, I think we are almost there. This lab better be worth it. <laughs> All right, I think we are officially in the lab. Now I feel like we are going to be safe. I don't think we're going to have any issues with sand. I think it's pretty much... Locked out of this laboratory. Once you hear music, <laughs> you know you're in a special place. Okay. Warp cores? What? What is this? Let's read the instruction manual. Records show Nomai arriving at the warp receiver on Brittle Hollow very slightly before departing from the White Hole Station. Ramy and I are devising an experiment to test if this is a real phenomenon or simple machine error. In theory, what we want to try to reproduce is a negative amount of time elapsing between... Crap, it looks like there's sand right outside. Uh, time elapsing between something entering the block or black hole exiting and the white hole at its destination. <laughs> we did say your name, Elegant Frost. Just giving you another shout out. Because of that raid that you did a little while ago, I got to also meet Fairy Dew and Artho. So thank you again, Elegant Frost. And how are you doing? Good to see you. Um, initial things first. Our experiment setup will first pair a small black hole core with a small white hole core to mimic the setup of the white hole station. Hypothesis. I love how they say that. Hypothesis. Uh, it is possible for an object to exit a white hole before entering the corresponding black hole. So, is that like a time travel kind of thing? Mm -hmm. So, it's the falling sand from the other moon. Okay, so I'm not getting... Oh, it's right outside the glass. Okay, I think we're safe still. Okay, before I start playing with those warp cores... Let me see if there's any other instructions. Oh, yeah. We got some more here. Perfect. I see you have entered the dry dry. Oh, I'm drowning in sand part of the game. Yes, we have Elegant Frost. Have you um, played through this game, Elegant, by the way? I'm uh, <laughs> struggling a bit, but it's really fun. I really love how everything's connected. Every planet's totally unique with its own systems. A really cool idea. 
Oh, you watch another person play through it? Nice. What did you think? Without spoilers, of course. Uh, the Southern Observatory is asking if creating a 22-minute interval is possible. That is, to have something arrive 22 minutes before it is actually sent through the warp. 22 minutes? Hmm? Sound familiar? We've learned the negative interval of time between departure and arrival can increase by adding more energy to the warp core. Problematically, the energy required to extend the interval increases at an exponential rate. Hypothesis. Creating a 22-minute long interval is possible, but we are currently unable to generate the necessary energy. Ramey and I believe it would be necessary to invent a new method of producing energy, a thrilling but enormous undertaking. We would also require advanced warp technology to be able to handle such energy. We would also likely need an enormous space to fit the proposed new energy and warp technologies together. Only location large enough would be Ash Twin. The energy is currently unavailable, you say. You're a gas pie. <laughs> My pun was unintended, Raimi, so I believe it's you who are aeriform. And so you thought it was pretty neat, but I'm not sure if I would have been as into it as the player. It's definitely a mood kind of game. He also called people meatbags or something. <laughs> nice. Oh, HK47. I never played the game, but isn't that from um, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic? I had some friends that were really big into that, and I vaguely remember something about meatbag. Oh, so this probably exits that door that we couldn't get through before. Yes. Okay. I'm not going to go that way because I don't want to leave this area. He was a great buddy. So we have another one of these scrolls here. But, oh, I have to put this down and take out this one. So what what is this one anyway? Oh, it doesn't actually give me a name. Let's see. The Ash Twin Project will be one of our biggest undertakings, metaphorically and physically. To build it, we need a way to travel quickly between the Ash Twin and each location that holds crucial project materials. What if we used warp towers, like the ones we have on White Hole Station, to connect Ash Twin directly to each critical location? Of note, each tower on Ash Twin will warp to a different planet. We can design each tower to visually reflect its warp destination. The Giant's Deep Tower, for, interest, for instance, could resemble a cyclone, and we could model the Timber Hearth Tower after a geyser mountain. My gratitude to those who noted my impressive language. Yes, the sun is not a planet. I believe this has been sufficiently clarified. Kindly stop reminding me. <laughs> They're all correct in that. Sun's not a planet. Skywalker, what's up, dude? Glad you can make it. What's going on? Poke. Root and I can begin work on this immediately in the Black Hole Forge. This will keep us busy. Yeah, I bet it will. Okay, so are these our symbols right here? There's a cyclone. There's that one. That would be Giant's Deep. Uh, I don't know. Mm, I don't know. Wait, which one's the geyser? <laughs> Should I be looking at the top or the bottom? Uh, that kind of looks like a cyclone to me. So I'm guessing this symbol right here is what I care about, and that's supposed to show me what um, what planet it is, this bottom part. Gosh, which one is the guy? This is probably the geyser. I'm guessing that's the geyser. So that's probably Hearth. Um, you said that was the broken planet, second to right. This might be the planet that we're on, actually. Ash Twin, that's probably Ash Twin. And that's probably the sun, right? <laughs> Who would want to go to the sun? We sure as heck couldn't survive there. Okay, so down here is the actual warp cores. I skipped this until I read everything. Wait, there's another one of these things. Let me read that one first. Let's take out the scroll. Drop it there. Grab this one. An update. 
Our experiment here reproduced the anomaly in arrival and departure times, but Pi is unconvinced it's more than an equipment error. I hope to strengthen the effect to render it visible to the unaided eyes. To that end, we've decided to try adding more energy. I imagine the Sunless City's energy supply should prove sufficient. Of note, Remy, Yarrow's request that uh, we let him know before we reroute energy to the experiment. All available energy has been rerouted from the Sun City to our experiment. Remy and I are about to run a new test. Hypothesis confirmed. Hypothesis confirmed. I saw it. Pi saw it. Hypothesis confirmed. He's so excited. <laughs> this is beyond extraordinary. This changes everything. What a beautiful day for the intersection of abstract theory and practical application. I'd hate to leave him in the dark. <laughs> nice. Oh, and sad news, Skywalker, your laptop can't run the PS3 emulator, so I'm going to have to hold off until you can afford a gaming PC. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, that's the thing about emulation, Skywalker, is the hardware, like whatever computer you're running that you want to try to emulate the console, it needs to be many, many times more powerful than what you're trying to emulate. So when you try to emulate like a Super Nintendo, your phone is way more powerful. But when it comes to like a PS3... Yeah, you gotta have a really beefy computer to do that smoothly, unfortunately. Okay, so these are the warp cores. Don't mess with that. I guess we'll mess with this first and see what this does. Oh, do you want a fun way to finish this run after exploring the room? Sure. Oh, something's opening. What is that? Just a little open area? I could put the scout in there. Oh, we can see ourselves. That's cool. I never even tried to do that. Okay, so does... Oh, I see. It's not open yet. I think that's going to take me into the warp core. So we have to... Activate one of these. That one's white. Oh, is that the white portal? Or white... What do they call it? White gate? Dark gate? I forget. Let's see, and switch the ball. Oh, was there a ball on the floor next to all those planets? That was upstairs, wasn't it? Oh, no. There's nothing on the floor in there. Oh, right here. This guy has to move. Okay. There we go. Okay, I think it's all powered up. Yeah, I see power going to that. And put some cores in those small areas next to the window. Right here? So I guess we combine two of these. How do you know what these are? It's like there's a pair of these white balls, a pair of the black balls, and then three that have nothing. So we need a black and a white. I guess you'd figure that out just by experimenting. Whoa. Oh, so you get to look at it. That's pretty interesting. Oh, so I can shoot my scout out now, right? If I shoot it into the white one, it does come out the black. <laughs> That's cool. And the other way around too. But there was a time delay, they said, right? Yeah, so look at this. If I shoot it out into the black one, it comes out the white one at the same time. Pretty much. As it enters, it comes out. But when I shoot it in the white one, it comes out of the black one before it actually goes into the white one. Do you see that? Like, you can see it on the ground before it even gets through there. Oh, I guess it does the same both ways. Can we do... What, did I put a white one there? Two white ones? No. <laughs> no, we cannot. Um, what if we put one with nothing? I guess it has to be white and black. I'm guessing they're both the same. Yeah, it seems to be about the same. 
Can I take a picture as it's going through? Like, which one took the picture? It looked like the one coming out took the picture. Not the one going in. Okay, did that open this up now? No, that's not open. Maybe that doesn't open, actually. So, well, that's so cool. So there should be... I'm assuming... Then they say there's like a way to teleport between all the different planets. Yeah, I think so, Hasifa. I think we're probably done here. I guess you know better than I do, but... It looks like we've exhausted this place. So this is the way out, kind of. Play around with those cores. I kind of thought I was, but we tried... I think I tried every combination, didn't I? Oh, do you mean... Rather than putting them in there? <laughs> play with them here? Or is there anywhere else to put them? Oh, oh crap, the um, sand's coming up, so if I, oh I don't, I think I'm too late, darn it, quick close it, <laughs> don't ruin the experiment, <laughs> too late, there's sand in there, um, so what do you do, do you shoot your thing and then quickly remove one of the cores as it's about to go through or something? That's interesting. So I, I don't think I'm going to come back here just to do that. But like, what happens? Okay, so let's find our ship really quick. Looks like it's just over here. And we'll check our log to see what else we need. There might not be anything else. Oh, it's a different ending. That's cool. Yeah, look at this. All of the sand is pretty much on this planet now. It's such a cool idea how sand just moves back and forth between the two planets. There we go. Okay, we unlocked some new stuff. It looks like there's still something at the Sunless City. There's more to explore here. That's when we were underground. So I'm guessing we want to restart this and go back there. Because there was definitely new paths I hadn't explored in that Sunless City. So yeah, we should probably go ahead and meditate because I can't get back there now. Then we can rush back down there and do that. A fish skeleton area. Oh, down there. That's right. I remember that. And apparently that's where we can find out their secret to avoid in them, right? Which I think will help me. Is that in Dark Bramble? I think we tried to go into the center of one of the planets and a giant fish, one of those guys just ate me right up. So yeah, if we have a way to avoid them, scare them off or something, or just keep them from eating us, then we can explore that area a bit more. So I think we have the same general plan from the beginning. We just have to rush there as quick as possible. Oh, and I missed that Viper Kitty. I'm sorry. You see, you broke your wrist, wrist after f uh, falling off your bike. So your arm was in a cast for two months and it still gets bothersome. That really sucks. After 28 years, your wrist still bugs you. Like, you hear about that a lot, though. Like, if it's knees, back problems, things like that. It's like, we're really fragile when you think about it. We're really complex creatures, but some things that break, they never really get healed, do they? Oh, that's good. I see, but the rest aren't quite as stressful. I guess getting in there can be stressful, right? Unless you know the shortcut. Unfortunately, since I opened up that door to that laboratory, I wish I could just go right back in there. <laughs> but that's probably not going to be our shortcut. Everything else pretty much um, gets changed. I assume that would too. Oh, it's over by the gravity cannon. Honestly, without like experimenting, I'd probably take longer trying to do that than I would not. There's the gravity cannon. But without knowing it ahead of time, it'd probably take me longer. There is that. I 
I don't use this very much. I really should use this more. You could do much smoother landings that way. Ouch. <laughs> Keep hitting things. Okay, so I'm still going to rush down there, but I'm glad to know everything else down there isn't quite as stressful. Yeah, this is the way. Sweet. I'll check that out later, Hasifa. That doesn't spoil anything, right? It's more just like a fun, unique ending. Okay, we want to go this way. Take a left. Ah, Easter. I see what you did there, Hasifa. <laughs> Happy Easter. Happy belated Easter, everyone. And then we go up here. Yeah, this is one of those things that if I didn't finish all of this today, and I came back to this on Thursday, I would forget some of this path. I'd remember some, I'm sure, but probably not every step. I think this game, if you streamed for a long time or you just played it off stream, would definitely benefit from you playing long hours of the game in like big sets, you know, like play it for a solid five, six hours if you have the time, just to kind of keep everything in memory and then play again the next day. Don't take a long break. Okay, let's go ahead and light everything up though. Okay, so that just opened that over there. This is the I Shrine District. Let's check this out. I guess we gotta check them all out. The setup of them are fun to figure out. Yeah, they did such a great job of making all of these places so unique and different. Oh wait, I think I did this already. Yeah, they don't know why the eye is important. I think I explored this before when I was running out of time. And then I also think I did this as well. I couldn't get in this way because of that stuff. So then I, didn't I fly to the top? And I think there was a way down. I'm not sure. I might have already explored all of this. Yeah, I kind of feel like we did that. Um, let's go back here. So that was the I... I district? Is that what they call it? We did the high energy lab. Hey, Speedy! What's up, dude? Welcome! Um, Stepping Stone District. Which one is that? I love a dramatic intro. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay, that one's also down here. It looks like that one is right here. We should probably do this one first because it's lower, meaning it's going to get sand first. Crap. Did I just break their sign? Oh, good. It comes back. Um, stepping Stone Cave. Let's check this out. Yes, very much uh, speedy, like an exploration puzzle kind of game. And it's so unique and interesting. They really did a good job with this game. It's very tricky and unique. Uh, I've never played anything quite like it, but I really enjoy it. This place is really dark. I'm just going to kind of go from island to island. Oh, I see some lights over there. Let's try to keep going this way. There we go. And Cyborg, you wouldn't recommend exploring that cave before reading something that mentions where you should go in it. Oh, crap. I'm already in there, Cyborg. I'm sure we'll figure it out. <laughs> it's going to be a piece of cake. <laughs> Although there could be like some kind of maze, I guess. Kind of like that other place where it said you need to go left and right and go up here. And if you don't, you just get completely lost. Well, we found some stuff. Are we playing the fossil fish game tonight? 
I fed the fossil fish a new lantern. If you go to the stepping stone cave, the entrance to the fossil fish cave is easy to see now. Gratitude, Solnum. Uh, it's good you're small enough to climb in through the hole at the anglerfish outlook. I'm still small enough. You won't be for long. Mom and Dad are tall, and so you will be tall too. That's cute. You get to hear him play games. I haven't played No Man's Sky, but yeah, I, I don't doubt there's probably some similarities like that. Wait, did that just spit me out in the same main area I've been before? I was going to say that area looked all familiar. Uh, we're meeting in the fossil fish cave to play the game. If you're too big to climb through the angler fish hole, which is me, um, you'll have to go the long way. But it isn't far. Go to the stepping stone cave and then up into the fossil fish cave. I try to get to the fossil fish uh, through the stepping stone cave, but I couldn't find the entrance. Where is it? Remember to feed the fossil fish first. If you go to Anglerfish Outlook and throw a light into his mouth, he'll show you the way. Our uh, little android camera thing. That's a light. Tage, or Taget can't fit through the Anglerfish Outlook hole anymore because he grew bigger. He's taller than Levy now. Who cares? Ilex is still the tallest. <laughs> you can tell it's like some kids chatting back and forth. Um, have you played No Man's Sky, Speedy? That game had such bad news when it came out. Bad reviews, just overhyped, all this kind of stuff. And then they stuck with it. They kept working and working and working. And apparently they've turned the game around. It's supposed to be great now. Okay, so we need to go to the Angler Foot Fish Outlook and toss a light into the mouth, right? Yeah, he'll show us the way. Okay. And Zetch. I love how the kids have noticeably different handwriting on their text. That's very true, Zetch. And welcome. Thank you for uh, joining us. You can tell that their scribblings looks more like my handwriting if I was writing in this alien language. It looks very chunky and just kind of not as refined as the other one really cool idea and even not even just kids but you can see the different um nomai themselves often have their own unique handwriting even if it's just slightly different hard to tell from a distance uh, okay looks like i can go up here already been up here yeah we did that what is that oh that's how that's where i came in here okay I want to make sure we don't miss anything. Okay, I guess the next place I should try going is that uh, angler fish outlook then. I'm not sure where that entrance is. Oh, true. <laughs> Good call. Yeah, we do need some oxygen. There we go. Um, I think one of these tells me that, right? Here it is. Okay, so let's take that down. Turn it on. That's the entrance right there. Well, I thought I just came from there. Maybe not. This should be it. Actually, no. We came from that direction. So I've never actually been up here. Oh, this is where we're going to see him. This is amazing. Look inside the cave. How did some? Uh, how did this come to rest here? We haven't encountered others in these caves. I think this is a rare find. From what we can see... Coleus and I believe the specimen must be very old indeed. Imagine what we might learn if we could examine it. We both agree it's unlikely this dry planet is this horror's place of origin, especially considering what we observed during the vessel's evacuation. Clearly, this hole is too small for it to have fit through. Hypothesis. There is another entrance to this cave. If there is, Coleus and I will find it. I can't leave valuable information undiscovered. That's what the kids found. An update. We need to find a way inside quickly. Mel Melore, because I have... I returned here to search for an entrance to the cave. There were children playing on the specimen. Yeah, they're wrecking your uh, your studies. So, oh, I see they're writing down there too. So we can launch this. Oh, we launch it in the mouth. Let's, we could probably do better than that.
There we go. Okay, now let's see where that light is. We should see light poking out of some hole, and that'll be our other entrance into that cave, right? Is it back this way? Perhaps? Oh no, we can't go that way. <laughs> the sand keeps us down. That's a one-way trip, so that's probably not it. Um, well, it's kind of this way. Maybe there's something back here. So we're looking for some light poking out of somewhere. Or was it further down? Oh, we go back in the stepping stone cave. Okay. Luminous, how are you doing, dude? Welcome. Okay, that Oh, no, it's about to fill up, isn't it? I think it's this one. Yep, that's it. I gotta be... Oh, crap, sand's filling up. I might not have been quick enough. Can't see any of that area down there. Oh, our scout's right there. Actually, we can kind of follow our scout a little bit. Crap. Can't go that way. Let's go this way. Our scout is like right there. But because of the sand, hmm, we might be too late. So close. See a lot of light coming from over here. What is this? Oh, there's our scout. Hey, there we go. Nice. Oh, that's cool. I love that view coming out through all the teeth. Oh, you got control on the steam sail? That's awesome. How are you liking it, Luminous? That was such a fun game. I still have to go back and play through all the DLC. Oh, no. Are these the kids? Were they playing here when they died? Hold on. Um, whoever was it when we ended last time is the anglerfish. Oh, that's their game? That's cute. Rule change. The anglerfish now has to wear a blindfold and do not peek. The rest of us, the little fish, line up against one wall. Then the, when the anglerfish says so, the little fish sneaks across to the other side. If the anglerfish catches you, you're eaten. Uh, last little fish to be caught is the new anglerfish. The old anglerfish gives the new anglerfish the blindfold and becomes a little fish. Kind of reminds me of Marco Polo a little bit, huh? Uh, why are we changing it? It's too hard if you can't see anything. Ant Pie says real anglerfish are blind, so you have to wear a blindfold. The rule stands. Oh, they're blind, are they? So are they finding me because of sound? Rule update. It's okay if younger kids don't wear the blindfold when they're it. The rest of us still wear it for scientific accuracy. It's important. Um, and to make the game more even. Yeah, they must have just heard my ship, I'm assuming, Hasifa. So maybe you can do all of that without your ship at all, just floating through there. Okay, so there's the other side of that little observation window. Doesn't seem like there's anything else. And can you believe it's already been five to six months since you played it? Not at all luminous. It feels like it was maybe a month ago. Maybe two months ago. Oh gosh, I'm already stuck in here. Okay. Oh, there is a path up? Oh, so there is. Good call. I was about to meditate to get out of here. Oh, and there's new stuff over here too. This might be more research. Anglerfish study. Here we go. An update. Uh, Melora, while I was making sketches of the anglerfish, I observed the children I saw earlier playing here again. They've added a rule to their game that incorporates our research. It's wonderful. I'm entirely delighted. It's never too early to appreciate biology. And Hot Rod. Hey, how's it going, dude? Welcome to the stream. The long growth protruding from its head is bioluminescent. Perhaps it, is use, it used this growth to attract prey. Like a lure? It got me one time. I was going towards the light. Visually, the specimen appears to be one of the same species of the anglerfish in Dark Bramble. We don't believe it's originated from this planet. This anglerfish digestive tract suggests death by starvation. 
Well, yeah, I mean, if you're on a different planet than where you belong, what the heck are you going to eat, right? Oh, we made it outside. That was another one of those doors we could not open at all. Okay, well, let's get back to our ship and uh, check out our information. Freedom! <laughs> and also, Hot Rod, have you played this game before? This is my first time. I'm finding it really cool. Yeah, I also think Luminous, if I played that control game again, I would get even more out of the story, kind of knowing the basics, because the story was very cryptic when you first get started. There we go. Okay, we've unlocked pretty much everything there, except there's something in Escape Pod 3. But this is talking about how it never made it out of Dark Bramble. So that's not necessarily here. Oh, you just beat it a few days ago. Nice. Yeah, rewards knowledge over just gimmicky game mechanics and checkpoints. 100% hot rod. So cool. I will say the game is definitely... I've got a little bit lost as what the next thing I really should do is, but it has an interesting organic flow to it as well. Okay, we've almost completed everything here, except there's more to do in the Sunless City. Crap, what else did I miss there? We could start that over. I'm not sure what else we need. But we are getting tons of information in the Sunless City. Let's meditate. And uh, so this game does look good on a 2 gigabyte 1050. I don't think I'm going to find a 3080 at a reasonable price. No, you will not. Uh, found a guy that's selling them for two grand and selling a 3060 for 1G. Jeez, a grand for a 360. Those were originally supposed to be, what, 350 bucks or something? Video card prices are just painful. And the warp towers are on Ash Twin, those big ones uncovered by the sand. Oh, so it's on the... Ash Twin is the opposite one, right? I'm on Ember Twin, I think. But there's still more to do in the Sunless City, which I think I need to go back there. Yeah, we, we've been pretty good about no spoilers, Hot Rod. Sometimes I need a little nudge in the right direction as far as, like, just how to proceed, but, like, no real mechanics or story spoilers. Although, we got a lot of information at this last place. They were talking about how the Sun Project is has the potential to just, you know wipe out the Sun and destroy this whole solar system, which seems like that's happening. But they also talked about how they are able to send stuff basically back in time 22 minutes, which also seems to be happening. Okay, back to the Sunless City. There we go. I also get a kick out of how smooth everything feels. Like, yeah, you can have a cool puzzle game, but like the graphics, the mechanics, the way all the different planets feel different, they do such a good job with that. And you can see everything wherever you are in the game, which is really neat. It gives the game a good feeling of, I don't know, like, like a simulation, I suppose. Rather than just like, oh, here's this level, here's this level. It all exists at once. All right, let's find our spot and land. Where is that escape beacon? There it is. Let's see, you want to uh, left here and talk up the trench? Wait, what are you talking about, Luminous? <laughs> oh, too fast, too fast. There we go. You know, when I first started playing this game, I was so delicate with the landing. And then I kind of discovered, you know what? It's not as delicate as it looks. So in the interest of time, I definitely pushed through things a little bit quicker than a scientist would. Okay, I think I have this path pretty much memorized. Yeah, and like a real physics simulation. That's super cool. And I love how the gravity on each planet is different as it should be. Like when you're on Giant's Deep, you can't jump to save your life. Oh, I got you, Luminous. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Oh, 
Oh, really, Hot Rod? I did not catch that. That's a really cool detail. Oh, man. Yeah, they did a fantastic job on this. And it would be really easy to play through this and, like, depending on what type of game player you are, just not really appreciate or notice so many of these details. I mean, unfortunately, I have a feeling because of the buzz the game got initially, a lot of folks probably picked it up and put it down real fast. Not really understanding what they're doing or what the purpose is. But the more you play it, the more this game rewards you. Okay, so we're back in the Sunless City. I said there's something else we're missing. I think we went all of the primary directions. So my guess is that there's some writing that we missed. I know I looked at all this. <laughs> this was a scary thing to read. <laughs> that was talking about them destroying the solar system. Okay, which of these have we not fully explored? We did the Anglerfish Outlook. I think we did that. Stepping Stone District. Maybe we didn't finish that. You know, we might not have finished everything in the Ice Shrine. That's way up here. Actually, maybe I didn't do this at all. I actually think I thought the Ice Shrine was something else. You see, you once glitched the game and send the twins in different directions. They became independent planets. And then the Ashfin Twin... That is crazy. I can't believe that. Um, it Was that just like a natural thing that happened, Cyborg? Or did you have to do something to cause that? Okay, let's bring our camera out. I can walk here okay. And we jump in here. Okay, there's some bad stuff there. So you can only see this dangerous mist if you uh, use your camera. That's why I'm doing this. Can't drop down that way. Okay, it looks like I can probably fly over it. So let's try that. Oh, oh, oh. I probably wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> I didn't realize it was that small of an opening. All right, maybe that was it. I don't know. So you fly the ship accelerating constantly away from the solar system for 20 minutes? That's pretty cool. Yeah, just a little bit of radiation burn. Those things can kill you really quickly. I have been killed by that stuff before. Oh, I found it, Cyborg. Here is that shortcut you were talking about. Okay. Yeah, actually, one time I did fly really far away from the solar system as much as I could. What's really cool is if you use your tool to like listen to musical instruments when you do that, it um, you get to hear everybody playing music together. I thought that was a really cool idea. Okay, that's bad. Oh, that looks like an entrance, but it's covered with cactuses. What about that? Can we go in there? All of this area looks just way too dangerous. I'm gonna try to land right here. And barely land there safely. Can't go that way. I might be able to fit through there, I'm not sure. Oh, 1 a.m. Cyborg. Oh, are you uh, East Coast? I'm in uh, California, so it's almost nine o'clock for me. Oh, have a good one. Thank you so much for dropping in, Cyborg. Hope you get a good sleep. Okay, I'm going to try to cram myself through this little hole right here. Good luck, John. Oh, God. That didn't work at all. Oh, crap. <laughs> I hit another one. Oh, you're in Brazil, so five-hour difference. Yeah, I guess three plus nine is not one. <laughs> we'll get some good sleep, dude. Hope you get a good rest and good luck tomorrow. All right, let's try this again. How do I fit through there? Oh, crap. Oh, no, I got killed. Son of a... It, I'm thinking maybe I wasn't even doing the right thing there. It didn't look like there was hardly any entrance. I could have shot my probe in there, but I don't think that would have helped me either. But my guess is that is the area I still have to explore to check that off the list. 
Unfortunately, if I check our ship's log, I don't think we actually unlocked anything. I don't think we discovered anything new. But I'm going to double check just to make sure. Yeah, nothing new here. Now see, it also probably just leads to the gravity cannon though, since it's right below the hole you found. That's true. Yeah, it could just be towards that entrance. Although, I don't know if I've uncovered everything for the gravity cannon, if there's more beneath that place I care about. I, I think that's the only area I haven't explored in those caves, and I still don't have it checked off. There's the eye area, which I was trying to go to. There's the anglerfish caves. I think I finished that. There's the laboratory. I think I finished that. And uh, wasn't there one more? Oh, you didn't return when you got to work. I made it there safe. Oh, that's good, Dingo. I'm glad you made it safe. You have a decent drive to work. I don't know how long you were actually driving during that time, but that's a little bit of a trip, isn't it? Oh, also, Dingo, is your new work going to be working from home? with what you're doing, or are you going to be actually going into an office? And when do you start, by the way? I think it's like next week, maybe, or the week after? Pretty soon, I think. Okay, so we should definitely take that shortcut, because that saves a considerable amount of time, now that we've discovered it. I just have to find that thing sticking out of the ground. There it is. Let's go ahead and land. <laughs> Poor Dingo, you got there and the building was still standing. Doesn't matter anymore, you got a new job, Dingo. You're almost out of there. Okay. Now I just gotta find which of these little, uh... Mountains... Oh, I think I found it right there. What luck. <laughs> I don't think I could have done that better if I had tried. Alright. Um, let's equip this thing again. So, yeah, maybe there's nothing here we need. Oops. There we go. Maybe the only purpose of this area is the shortcut. Maybe that's the real reason to come here. Okay, with that being said, <laughs> is there another easy way out of here? Oh, I could fly around that side, I think. I just gotta be careful not to uh, bump anything. There we go. That's much better than the direction I was taking. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else in there for me. I think we are done with the camera. Oh, only about 20 minutes. That's not too bad. Aw, oh, Luminous, have fun. Thank you for the lurk, dude. Okay, well, let's go back to... Uh, what was this? I think I fully explored this area. But I'm not 100% sure. Let me check. I like the music it plays here, too. Oh, maybe we didn't explore this area. Okay, that whole floor looks like it's dangerous. Oh, I want to get in there so bad. There's like one little spot right there. Maybe we can do it really fast. All of that is dangerous. But what if I go over there? Yep, that's all going to kill us. All right. Wish me luck. I'm going to drop down there and try to open that as fast as human. Oh, I can open it from here. I don't even have to go down there. It's probably still dangerous, but I'm still going to try to swoop in and hope it's safe. All right. Ready, set, here goes everything. Ow, 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 ow. Oh, we made it. Okay. <laughs> I think I just opened a door that I could have gone to the other way as well. I don't think that actually got us anything new. But we proved we could do it. <laughs> Even if we didn't accomplish anything. 
Yeah, see, this is the door I first went into, and then it just goes down there. Okay. That's a dead end. Hmm. Yeah, maybe that's all there is to this area. We read this before. It talks about the eye. And there was one of those blue lift things in the back. Let's see. Was that when I first dropped down? Let me get back in that room again. Whoops. Crap. I'm all discombobulated. I think it was right here. Okay. So I'm in here. Oh, right there. How do I get in that room? Was that the thing you were talking about? Oh, maybe I can go up and over. Hmm. No, that looks like it's locked off. And that goes right back down here. Yeah, I definitely see what looks like a little lift right there. I'm not sure if that's the same one you're talking about. Maybe it... It goes all the way down here, though. Maybe I can see it in the corner? Oh, right there. Okay. Although it's... Oh. Not exactly active. <laughs> Luckily, this stuff isn't killing me. There we go. Oh, and there's oxygen in here, too. That's a tricky little area to get to. Be welcomed in this place. This shrine is a space to reflect on what brought us to the star system. The signal from the eye. We observed the eye's signal in our travels and followed it here to find its source. What we know is this. The source of the signal, which we have chosen to call the eye of the universe, is older than the universe itself. The rest we have yet to learn. Enter and open your mind to its possibilities. Oh, thank you very much, Zetch. And am I saying your name right, by the way? Is it Zetch? I'm terrible with names, so please correct me if anything's off. If the eye called to us, why won't it reveal itself? Why is it so difficult to locate it? Did something happen to it? Did the signal stop? Does the eye no longer desire to be found? Perhaps this isn't the eye's choice. The eye may not have been able to communicate with us more than it already has. And I saw one more note up here as well. Or a couple notes, actually. Is the eye natural or artificial? Maybe someone built it. The eye is older than the universe itself. How could something exist before its creator? <laughs> Chicken before the egg problem. It could be naturally occurring, though this doesn't answer how the eye could be as old as it is. Did the eye deliberately call out to us by sending the signal, or did we hear the signal by coincidence? We could be seeing meaning where there is none. Suppose the signal was produced accidentally. Does that mean the eye is any less important, though? Perhaps the eye wanted to be found. Could it be sentient? Maybe it chose us. Does the eye desire something from us? Could it need us in some way? Maybe it doesn't have to be us. Maybe anybody could help the eye. Maybe we could help the eye. Oh, there's that symbol again. We keep seeing this symbol everywhere. That symbol, I think, probably represents the eye. Okay, and this is where we drop down. Ha! <laughs> Plot twist, Phantasma. We are the eye. Okay, I think that was everything. Wait, what's this? Oh, this is that area you couldn't get up to. That's right. That's probably the shortcut to get out of here. Without dealing with all that again. I think we're done here. That's a cool little shortcut. See, now without going to our ship, I wish I could see if we've checked off 
all of the information for this place. I don't know if I've been this way. Oh, this Oh, this is to the gravity cannon. Okay. God, I just missed that sign. Yeah, we've been there before. You think it impossible, but it's a big brain theory. Hey, if you're right, Phantasma, then you get to say, called it. I knew all the time. And Tajay, ask not what the eye could do for you, but what you could do for the eye. <laughs> All hail the eye. Okay, let's get back down to here and make sure we've actually checked all these off. We did the high energy lab. We totally decimated the eye shrine right now. I think we did the stepping stone district. And we've definitely done the angle angler fish outlook. So let's go ahead and do this one again. Oops, stay on. That's that one. But there's other rooms over here. Let me just double check these. <laughs> That's funny. If I'm right, I get a token because I'm 100% convinced I'm wrong. <laughs> Sometimes it's fun to make those bold statements, though. It's just like that shot in the dark. You know, buying a lottery ticket. You never know. You never know. Okay, this is where the kids were talking. I think we've been through all this, but I'm not 100% sure. I will double check. And small kiwi, what's up? Your legs hurt from working on my puzzle? I didn't think putting a puzzle board on my table or using a pillow, so yeah, that was my afternoon. Oh, so you were just like kneeling on the floor and now your legs are hurting from doing that puzzle all day? Yeah, I can see that hurting. I'm doing good. I think I'm doing better than you. <laughs> my knees are okay. <laughs> my legs aren't hurting. Sorry that you hurt yourself, but uh, what kind of puzzle were you working on? I haven't done a puzzle since uh, Christmas time. Okay, this area is starting to fill in. We should probably open this up right now. It might be too late. A husband hotel puzzle. 1,000 pieces. That's going to take a while. That's cool. Yeah, one of the last puzzles I did with my wife, she's big into puzzles, was this Disney puzzle, and it was sort of like a stained glass puzzle. It was really cool. It was from Japan, and all the pieces were a translucent plastic that clicked together really strong. It wasn't like cardboard. So when you're done with it, if you put it in like a frame or put it somewhere where there's light coming through, it looks really neat. Okay, we, we've been here before. I don't know that we fully explored here before. This is more of the kids chatting. Yes, exactly, Small Kiwi. Yeah, it was a... If, if you, you go on Amazon and look for Disney stained glass puzzle, you'll probably find it. Oh man, we're running out of room. Oh no, this place is done. Okay, I think we're done with this with this section. So let's go ahead and meditate till the next loop. And I'm curious to see if it's going to tell us we've checked off all of what we need to for that area, the Sunless City. I hope we have because I really feel like I've exhausted it. If there's some place I missed, it's got to be some little area that you got to like Squeeze your way through just in the nick of time. Oh, and Zetch, thank you for the follow. I really appreciate that. My dog, Gus, appreciates it too. All right, so after that, I think we might want to go to the Dark Bramble and see if we can't sneak our way past those giant fish now that we know that they're blind, but they can hear our ship. So maybe if we leave our ship and just try to float through... We won't make enough noise to set it off. Okay, so where was that? Oh no, the Sunless City still shows something we're missing, but honestly, unless you guys know, I'm out of ideas. So I want to go to map mode. Let's see, this is Dark Bramble, right? Yeah. There's a lot of stuff we haven't done here. We got to find our friend with the harmonica that is lost somewhere here. Find the escape pod. I guess I haven't even looked for that yet. Maybe we should do that first. And then the vessel. All right. Too dark bramble we go. Oh, wait. Let's mark it. Why can't I mark these? Uh, 
That's okay. I guess we don't have anything marked on Dark Bramble. We That's probably been one of the places we've explored the least. What was really interesting, though, is we found something on our home planet that looked like the weird twisted plant on Dark Bramble. And we could hear the harmonica through the center of it. We could even shoot our little probe in there, but we couldn't find much. Okay, there's Dark Bramble right there. So somehow this place is connected to our home planet too, which is really interesting. What happened to all these people? You mean uh, the actual aliens themselves? I guess the, what are they called? The Kumai? Is that it? Or our race of people? Because we don't, I don't have all the clues yet. Um, we found dead bodies all over the place. We found their helmets and suits all over the place as well. But as far as what happened to them, maybe they were killed off from their experiments. Like they were trying to do something with the sun to try to get enough energy for something. But everybody was like very against that project because it could be dangerous to the whole solar system. They could have done something to themselves. Okay, now I kind of want to land somewhere. <laughs> Not that there's a lot of good places to land. And take out our little sound, what do you call it? Like a decoder, frequency decoder. And try to find the escape pod because I haven't actually found that on this planet yet. I often forget to even use that thing. Okay, so we're breaking this out. And let's go to Distress Beacon. Okay, there's something 900 meters that way. Actually, we probably should have done that first, maybe. This is actually a pretty big planet. Didn't seem that big as we were flying in, but now that I'm on this little chunk, I have a feeling I might have a hard time getting there without my spaceship. So let's go ahead and... We'll keep the distress beacon out, and we'll land a bit closer. There we go. Yeah, so just a little bit over here. It seemed like it was on the opposite side. Oh, it's in the center. Never mind, maybe it doesn't matter where I land. I was thinking that might be on the other side, but no. It's definitely coming from the middle. Okay. Well, let me scan the tops of these little shards and see if there's anything interesting. I don't think I ever spent a decent amount of time really exploring this. But no, it doesn't look like it. In that case, we are going to go in to that center, but that's where the big anglerfish will eat you, so I'm going to go without my spaceship. Is the... Oh, crap. <laughs> that's not how you land, John. I forgot to switch to this. There we go. Note to self, don't land glass first on the planet. Okay, luckily we can repair. Wait, why, why is it still moving? Stop, stop, stop. Okay. Let's go ahead and repair first. Okay, it looked like it was the front that I... Oh, crap. It was the front we damaged, right? The glass and everything? That's the back. Wait. Here's the front. There we go. Brand new. Okay, so we're going to wander over to the edge. Look for an entrance. Oh, this is creepy. Yeah, I mean, we're like making no noise at all, really. I want to try to go in as quietly as possible. Ouch. We want to try to make no noise. Now, there's a red light in there. I believe the white ones 
are all anglerfish. So I'm going to try to go towards the red one. See if I can't do that without getting eaten. Where'd it go? I think it's behind this branch. <laughs> this place is so creepy. Oh, I think we're getting close. This could be where their ship was. Oh no, I can hear it. Gotta be very quiet. What the heck is that? Another core? Do I go in there too? Okay, trying to move very slowly. This is wild. Okay. Where the heck's this? There's even more. What I assume are fish. Okay. Crap, there's one right there. Oh, there's a lot of them. Okay, be very quiet. Oh no. <laughs> I think I made too much noise. You know what I think I did? Because I was trying to readjust myself. I used the triggers. I think you can't use the triggers at all or it's going to eat you. But I think we're on the right path. I think we have to keep going towards the red light. And the other two places we have to visit is the comet and the sun station. I've been to the comet before. The only thing I can remember seeing there was there was like a frozen escape pod, I think. But th th there was some more information about that. I can't remember off the top of my head. But I'm thinking I'm not done with that dark bramble yet. We got to do some more there. Almost forgot to get my suit. And there was a message saying that the comet opened up on the sun side. I don't remember that. I might have missed that. Oh, so they actually got in there. That's really cool. There's Dark Bramble. Yeah, I definitely have to review the ship logs before we go there. Okay, this is a death sentence. Try and do autopilot is going to send me careening right into the sun. There we go. That should be safer. Give me a chance to have some water. Be sure to hydrate, guys. Almost there. Yeah, autopilot, not smart pilot. Oh, the um, the quantum moon is over here. How cute. We know all about you. Well, maybe not all about you, but we do know a lot about you. So I'm, I think I'm just going to try to land right on the center there. Not in the hole, because I'll get eaten immediately, but just kind of like right here on the side. Leave me a little bit closer. There's the entrance. Kind of hard to see when you're that far up. All right. So, note to self, no using any triggers. I think that's what will get you. Maybe even using too much of the directional pad. Or maybe it's even just like, if you get too close, it'll come towards you. I don't know. Maybe I'll just try to do very baby movements. Max, what's up, Max? How you doing? You ready to see me get eaten by a giant fish? Because it's probably going to happen again. As we all know, I am not the master of stealth. I am terrible at stealth. And this is kind of what this is. is like a stealth section. Okay, follow the red light, Joe.
Yeah, I guess when I press on the D-pad, you can see at the bottom left, it shows how much I'm pressing it in. Maybe I need to keep it under three arrows or something. If I go any more, maybe it can hear me. Oh, no. I kind of did the same thing I did last time, but I, I want to say I got too close. Okay, so it's probably a combination of sound and proximity. I guess if you get too close, he can hear even the smallest noise. The only clue we have is that they're blind. So I'm, I'm kind of making my own wait hypothesis on top of what they told me. Luckily, it's pretty quick to get in there. Oh, that really does fairy do. I didn't think of that. Good call. Yeah, that noise when... Uh, actually, it reminds me of the noise when you are doing the mirror thing, right? I forgot what they call that mirror, but yeah. I could definitely hear that. Yeah, the mirror music, yes. That was a cool game. I'm really curious to see what that group does next. I'm behind on my FMV games. I probably have at least five or six in my uh, Steam library I still need to play. <laughs> I'm playing Chicken with the Sun. Not a good game to play. You will not win. I'm trying to match my velocity, but it doesn't seem to be working. Maybe I'll just do autopilot. There we go. Holiness chamber people. <laughs> Little far away for landing, but it's okay. It'll work. Hotline chamber people. What's hotline chamber people? I know of hotline Miami. Oh gosh, we're going way too fast. Way too fast, John. We're not dead. We're not dead. My my ship's kind of dead, but we're not dead. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not going to bother repairing it right now. We can repair it if we get out of here. Because I'm not entirely convinced I'm not just going to get eaten again. And the phone you talked to on the board was just saying where I was at. Oh, I see. And what you up to there, Luminous? Okay, so I'm actually going to use all my controls, including the thrusters. I think I was incorrect about my hypothesis regarding the sound. I think I just got too close to them. So I'm going to now try to get to the red light while avoiding the white lights as much as possible. Oh, that's right. Initially, I was looking for... I'm scared this is going to make noise. I was looking for a distress beacon. But I don't... Actually, there is a distress beacon over there. Maybe I follow that instead. But there's a fish over there. I think that's a fish. It might not be a fish. This is going to kill me, isn't it? Oh, there's another bramble. Okay, I did not expect that. I assumed all the white ones were going to be fish. Okay, it still wants to go in there. I thought this thing would make a lot of noise. I didn't want to take it out. Uh oh, we lost it. Okay, let's try changing signal.
What is that moving around? I have no idea what that is. Okay, there is something up here. I'm going to try to keep going this way. That's so funny. Like, I didn't even think about breaking this thing out again. I just was just going to follow the different colored light. That sound is just haunting. Um, oh, Luminous, I'm playing this with controller. I, I think when you start the game, it says they recommend controller. And I could see that being true. Oh, there it is. Nice. Um, because of the flight controls. It, it would just be a little bit more intuitive with analog sticks. I'm sure it plays fine with keyboard and mouse, but I could see this being better. All right. I'm curious to see what kind of stories they have in here. Okay, Seca. Our escape pod crashed as we tried to flee this place, destroying our movement and communication capabilities in the progress or process. We've held out as long as we could here, but this pod's supply of breathable air is nearly depleted, and the anglerfish attack more and more frequently. Our best chance at survival is to return to the vessel to either repair the damage or, more probably, await rescue. Seca, is the message finished? The vessel's beacon is already growing fainter. It will be gone in a matter of hours. We need to leave here, quickly. Oh, that's scary. This place is a little bit hard to uh, navigate with no gravity, really. So I think if you read this top to bottom, it talks about what happened on this thing. This is kind of the black box of the ship. Uh, escape pod 3. Vessel has been mortally injured. Emergency sequence activated. Awaiting departure from vessel. Now launching escape pod 3. Multiple collisions have altered... Oops, I lost it. Uh, have altered pod's trajectory. Significant damage to the pod detected. Navigation error. Life support error. Uh, propulsion error. Scanning environmental... Or external environment. Scan complete. Gravity not detected. Obviously. Um, breathable air not detected. Multiple life forms detected. Potentially hostile. Do not exit pod. 100%. This place is terrible. <laughs> Oh, here's another one of these guys. Oh, and it says there's an unidentified signal nearby. Um, which one do I need? This one? Hmm, I don't see any unidentified signals. Okay, let's check this. There is a new problem. Our equipment is detecting two distinct beacons from the vessel. But it is impossible for the vessel to be in two different locations at the same time. I agree, but the beacons are exactly identical to each other. Perhaps if I had more time. We're nearly out of time already, Din. The vessel's beacon is quickly fading. Soon, it will be gone and all will be lost. Wait, I think I already read this. We will follow the beacon whose source is nearest to us. But suppose that beacon is false. Oh, no, I haven't read this. Uh, we likely don't have enough air to reach the farther of the two beacons, Din. The decision is made for us. We'll leave a trail of lights as we go. There's still a chance someone could hear our escape pod's distress signal. Like we found them. Um, so when they were talking about being two identical signals, that reminds me when we shot our probe through the dark bramble at our home planet. It then said there was like a duplicate signal detected and it couldn't show us any information. Here's the emergency escape hatch. I'm guessing we were supposed to follow these lights now. Okay, cool. Hopefully we don't have to avoid too many more of those fish. That would be nice. Oh crap. Try to do this with minimal movement. Oh no, I'm gonna hit the roof. I 
I tried, uh, I guess I can go back. No, I'm definitely going to run out of air um, or fuel. But I tried doing that, Hasifa, and I, nothing scanned for me. Maybe I had the wrong signal scope thing set up. Here's their escape hatch. But yeah, it told me unidentified signal. Let's see. It's hard to use this in here because of all those different things that pop up. It, it would be quantum fluctuations, right? Oh, we're going to die. <laughs> Darn it. Yeah, I couldn't get it to scan anything, unfortunately. Okay, we got to do that much, much quicker. It is under distress, distress beacons. Okay, well, now that we know about using the signal finder to follow distress, that'll get us there. Oh, Hasifa, sorry, I thought you meant for when it said, like, there's an unidentified signal. What it was inside that escape pod? What do I use again to scan that? I forget which signal it is. Also, wouldn't have time following the path. Yeah, I figured we were so low on uh, both fuel and oxygen. It is the distress frequency? Okay. I think I must have just turned it off too quickly when I got in there. A yoink. It always feels like a speed run because you want as much time as possible to make progress. Which side is it on? There it is. You might finally managed to seal a deal on the GPU for the Mac Pro? Uh, had a couple of people ghost me, and one said it was re reserved for the next day, and they didn't say anything. And you get an HD 7950 for it. Sweet, Max. Now, what is that equivalent on GeForce? I haven't really paid attention to uh, AMD card model numbers in a while, so I'm not sure like what roughly that equates to a GeForce. Slow down, John. Oh, about a 680? Oh, that's awesome, dude. Oh my gosh. Way too fast. <laughs> Eject. Eject. Oh, man. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. Nope. We're going to retry that. <laughs> I was going so fast. Could not slow down in time. Oh, that's right. I forgot all about that, Hasifa. Those, the light beacons is what sets it off. That's right. And Macs are really picky about GPUs. Plus, it's a 2008 model, so I'm not going crazy. For example, 900 series cards don't even work. Really? I didn't realize that. I've never really used a Mac beyond school. Um, I've had an iPod and stuff before, but uh, never like a Mac computer. Okay, that, I'm taking a mulligan on that one. I think the video card I have in my arcade machine, Max, is uh, it's probably not... Well, it might be a little bit better than that. I'm not sure. I have a 1060 in there, and it has 3 gigs. That's what I have in the arcade, which is fine for what I use it for. It plays all the fighting games just fine. And of course, all the emulation works perfectly. Okay, once I get past the sun, I'm going back to autopilot. I don't trust myself anymore. Oh, and Luminous, you have a Mac Pro 5. Oh, that's awesome. I've always liked the designs of their computers often. They're always at least unique. You know, something different than what you usually see in standard Windows desktops. Okay, let's go ahead and land near the entrance. We'll make it real quick. You know what would be fun? Is if we could take our ship in there. And just quickly use it to distract the fish and then eject and let them eat the ship while we go explore. I know it's not possible, but that'd be funny. Okay, which which side was it? So close. There it is. Wait, there's an even closer entrance. Okay. 
I want to try to use... It's You got to be very conscious about your fuel use here. Oh, and Cat and DJ. How's it going, Cat? This is a really, really interesting game. I've never played anything like it. Um, if you like puzzle games, exploration games, I highly recommend you check this one out. There we go. Okay. I can turn that off for now because we know which one it is. But uh, yeah, you're just exploring like a alien solar system. All the planets have like different mechanics and uh, they all act very differently. It's really clever. Confusing. And you'll definitely spend some time sort of being lost and experimenting. But such a unique kind of game. Never seen anything like it. And John's selling another game. <laughs> That's, I guess, the influencer thing. I've never been paid by anybody to sell anything. I just love talking about games that I enjoy. Um, the only time I've ever done a promoted thing was when we played that Cyanide and Happiness game. But they didn't pay me to play it or say good things about it. Really, um, they gave me a key to play it myself. And also keys to give away on the stream. Which was really cool. But all opinions were my own and all that stuff. Okay, which one of these is Distress Beacon now? Let's get a little bit further in here. Yes, exactly. I sell them because I enjoy them. <laughs> the happiness is infectious. There we go. Yeah, I'm really curious what those red lights are, though, too. I have a feeling that might be something interesting. Yeah, this game, in a way, really makes you feel kind of like a scientist explorer. Yeah. And uh, what have you been playing lately? I think the last time I saw you streaming, you were working on um, that Sea of Thieves, right? Crap, where is it? Oh, I lost the distress beacon. There it is. Did I just go right past it? There it is. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this thing out a little bit, just so we can identify that thing right there. Got to get real close. There we go. Now we knocked it out. So we've already read all of these things, so we're just going to go through the escape hatch and then follow the lights. <laughs> and I apologize if... <laughs> the gameplay is making anybody sick. It is very interesting floating around at zero gravity. Okay, so now we got to follow these lights. Yeah, and a good game is a game you can talk with enthusiasm. Exactly, Cat. Yes. Oh, you tried East Shade. I have that on my Steam library, but I haven't tried it yet. It looks like if you took Skyrim and you took out all the combat and you made it really relaxing... And all the people were animals, right? So what do you think of the game so far, Kat? I really was interested in checking that out sometime. Ooh, coffee time therapy. I wish I could. I will join you on Thursday, though, with coffee around this time. Whoa, okay. We have not been here yet. Is there anything to scan? No. What is this? Oh no, it looks like everybody's dead here. The hell happened? Yes, we do have a long stream on Thursday. My favorite stream that we ever have, typically. I love that long stream. Am I supposed to go in there? I don't know that I can go in there. It looks like it's too small. I could try to shoot my probe in there. Perhaps. Oh, is there something to read? I didn't see the writing anywhere. I gotta go quick, though. I don't have much time. Oh, there's a body holding something. It's got one of those things with multiple um, markings on it, doesn't it? Not him. Let's see. Are you holding something? He looks like he's holding something. Oh, uh, I don't think I... Oh, he's holding a person. Never mind. Um, 
You have something? Yep, I'm almost out of fuel. Who has it? <laughs> Which one of you guys is bogarting the reading material? That one. Okay. Like right in front of him. Careful, don't don't run out of fuel. Don't run out of fuel. To anyone who comes here searching for us, we followed one of the two beacons from the vessel to this place, but can now go no further. It's almost too faint to hear now, but the vessel's beacon is still faintly emitting from within this thorny seed. Yet the opening is too small for even a single nomai to fit through it, so our escape pod couldn't have flown through there. I don't understand how this could be possible, but this gruesome place seems to able to manipulate space itself. Maybe this was our undoing. So, to be so close to the location of the vessel, and still so far, is difficult. Worse, the vessel's beacon is dying. Soon, we will be unable to hear it. There is nothing we can do now but to try and perhaps find a way inside, or at least attempt to comprehend why this happened. My dearest hope is that the other peop the other escape pods were able to reach relative safety. Oh man, they had the worst of it landing here, didn't they? Oh, that's so sad. Yeah, and they're holding each other, just waiting to die. Alright, our ship log was updated. I want to try to shoot my little probe through there. Oh yeah, we're getting that duplicate signal again. Oh, we can take pictures though. What's in there? Crap. Do I need to maybe try shooting it from different sides? Bring it back. That is the vessel in there. Oh, that's wild. Yeah, that does look like one of their ships. <laughs> We're a goner. That's so cool, though. Oh, did I see the signal? I might have seen the signal as it was zooming in. Let me try one more time. We should see a light, right? Like from the beacon. No, I don't think I saw it. Is it to the right? Oh, of the UI. Sorry, the signal. I'm, I was thinking like a signal like that big blue light they use. To the right of the UI. We got that duplicate signal, but it does stop in there. It's 800 meters away. We're a goner. <laughs> <laughs> Bummer. Yeah, and kind of like they got two duplicate distress beacons, right? There was the one inside the bramble and then one deep inside the seed as well. That was cool. So I'm not sure if that's everything we could have discovered there. I'll check the computer, but I have a feeling that if we follow the red lights, there might be something else in there too. I'm not sure what the red lights were. I never got close enough. It just took me into another bramble, of course. Or I guess, in the interest of time. Oh, and we have not found the harmonica. That's right. Our The guy that was left this place, um, we heard him through the bramble on this planet, which makes us think, oh, you must be on that planet. So let's check this again. So we found escape pod three. The Nomai Grave. The vessel's still hidden, but I don't know if we're getting in there. Besides shooting our thing in there. Um, let's go to map mode. Look at this. Ah, we got two things checked off. So we still want to find Feldspar and... The vessel's warp, warp core broke when the ship crashed into Dark Bramble. That's the only thing I can think of doing is warping in there because we can't get through that seed. Unless it has something to do with the seed thing that's back on our planet, you know? Seriously, Kat, there's so many of these things that connect together when you're in this rumor mode. You're really just checking out all these different planets, finding little details, and then you can start to connect the dots of how everything 
came to be. So the basic story cat is like you are on your home planet with all of your, you know, other people that are the same alien species that you are. And you have, um, I guess, desires to go into space and explore. And you guys know of this alien species that was here a long time ago, but you don't know what their purpose was. And you just got a device that can decipher their language. And you're, we're the first people to use it. So we're able to go from place to place and start to read their writings and figure everything out. It's really neat. I've never played Death Stranding. No, Luminous, I have not. Did you play it? Did you like it? Okay, so let's do that again. And, uh... Or just invent it, yes. <laughs> I think they had just recently created the technology and we get to be the first ones to try it out. <laughs> and then there's that too, Hasiba. <laughs> minor detail, minor detail. But yeah, a lot of this game is redoing portions. So there is kind of a timer, but it resets. Oh, really luminous. I've heard mixed things about the game. I like Kojima generally. I love Metal Gear Solid. Um, but I've heard mixed things about like the flow of the game. Um, it was something I would be interested in streaming. And then I read it's like 60 hours long or something like that. Like it's a really long game. And I usually try to avoid those games on stream just because I play maybe 10, 12 hours a week. Starting up a game like that, that'd be the only thing I get to play for like two months. And then unfortunately, most of my gaming time, if I'm not playing a game with my wife, I typically do most of my uh, game time with you guys on stream. So it's sometimes hard for me to find time to put in a game like that, but it looked interesting. I heard the game gives you the majority of the story kind of like at the end. Is that right? Okay, let's go ahead and drop here. This place is stressful. <laughs> Those angler fish. It's just a it's a jump scare waiting to happen. Alright, down we go. So this time I'm going to switch to Outer Wilds Ventures. We're going to follow the harmonica. Which actually doesn't seem to be near any of the lights. Maybe it's near the red one, actually. Oh, no. Actually towards that white light. Better not be a fish right there. So this is another explorer that got lost a long time ago and nobody knows where he's been. Ah, oh, see, there's another one of these brambles we have to go into. Somewhere in here. Oh gosh, there's a lot of lights. Uh, okay, looks like it's straight ahead. I'm so scared any of those other lights is a fish about to eat me. Oh, slow down, slow down. That's him. That's him. I think. Oh, it's another one of those seeds, isn't it? What is this? Where are you? Okay, well, all we can do is shoot our little thing in here, I believe. Get a good angle. All right. Oh, there's multiple signals. I didn't realize that. Nate, what's up, dude? You made it. Oh, you just got some dinner? Wait, did that just spit me out on our home planet? It kind of looked like Timber Hearth for a second. That might have sent me to Timber Hearth. Maybe that's why we could hear stuff here. Okay, so let's go back to this. Let's see if we hear another signal. That's not that one. Oh! It spit out over here. My scout says it's that way too. 
Got it there. What'd you have for dinner, by the way, Nate? <laughs> this is such a crazy planet. Stir fry, that's always good. And it's usually really easy, too. Stir fry is often like the best meal when you have a lot of ingredients you don't know what to make. Stir fry. Oh, slow down, slow down. I think we found him. It looks like a camp. Is he alive? He is alive. Whoa. Where'd you come from? No one's come in here in, well, ever, actually. That makes you the second Hearthian to ever reach Dark Bramble. After me, of course. Well done. Say, it's you. They made you an astronaut? And you haven't blown yourself up yet? Good for you. <laughs> I love that. And see, Luminous, you have a question about streaming. Um, how do you hotkey from one display that has the game to other ones? So actually, I have this thing called the uh, Stream Deck. I actually have a couple of them. And they're really handy to basically do shortcuts to change scenes, play sound effects, just do all different kinds of functions within OBS. I can kind of show you what they look like if you haven't used one before, but... Mine looks kind of like this. So I have different buttons I can press to go to different scenes, things like that. I also use it to, uh, I can hear myself. If I press this, I can hear myself to make sure the sound's okay. Do all different kinds of things. I do the death counter over here, all kinds of stuff. But yeah, the, super handy. Definitely recommend it if you want to stream, but you don't have to buy one of those. You can actually do it on your phone as well. Um, they, they have, I guess it's just called the Elgato Stream Deck f Mobile. I don't know what it's called, but yeah, look up Elgato Stream Deck and they have an app on the phone that you can download and just use that. Yeah, see, exactly right, Nate. Let's see, you, you haven't found that yet? You've been looking on YouTube and can't find the answer? There you go. Hopefully that helps. Let's see, yeah, the family just chops up a whole bunch of veggies and such and you just make your own. Yeah, it's super easy and just... Often, it's a great meal at the end of the week when you got to go grocery shopping, but you got some extra food to get rid of. Just do that. And the physical buttons would be nicer personally, but it's not bad. Yeah, and like that's something you can get later. You know, if you get some money with the stream, you can put that back into the stream and pick up one of those. Okay, so uh, let's see. What are we going to say? I'll just, we'll be excited to see him. Feldspar, you're alive. Oh, and the app doesn't work on your phone? Oh no, Skywalker, what uh, what kind of phone do you have? You never were the brightest hatchling, were you? Yeah, that's right, I'm alive. Been camping out since... <laughs> I was trying to be just excited for you. Uh, been camping out here since my ship, uh, you know, crashed. Violently. <laughs> Wait, you crashed? But you're the greatest pilot in Hearthian history. I haven't lived in polite society for a while, so I'm just going to go ahead and assume that wasn't sarcasm. <laughs> nice. And Jay uses a touch portal? Max, is that like an alternative to Stream Deck, pretty much, on your mobile phone? Honestly, I haven't done it in a while. When I stream with Andy now, we just play at my computer. But when I first started streaming with Andy, we would actually be on my futon. We'd play games on the television, and we usually have like a laptop propped up in front of us so we could read chat. And it was, it's awkward, but it worked. Uh, we had a microphone sitting in between us, and I just cranked up the gang so you could hear our voices. It didn't sound quite as good as this, but it worked. But yeah, for something like that, a mobile stream application for changing scenes would be perfect, because I'm, I'd be way too far away from my stream decks. Okay, my story goes like this. I just finished exploring the core of Giant's Deep, and I wanted to try my hand at Dark Bramble, seeing as no one had ever had before. Getting around in Dark Bramble was easy, mind you. Once you've dodged one massive interdimensional vine bristling with thorns, you dodge them all. But after a while, I run into this huge angler fish. You seen them? Big gnarly things. And this was the biggest one I've seen yet. I pull a few stunts, try to shake the thing off. Nothing too fancy. I'm going full speed when the fish clips me, knocks me into a vine, and well, like I said, I crash. Blammo! On impact, my ship starts making noises that it's coming apart from the inside. And I think, well, that ain't great. Sure enough, I barely get out of there before the electrical systems start sparking like crazy. 
It's either move fast or die unpleasantly. So, I put a little distance between me and my poor ship, fried ship. I camped out near where I crashed at first. I found the skeleton later. Great find. Would have been stupid not to use it. So I moved my setup over here and planted my emergency tree seeds. Been here ever since. Hey, at least you get constant oxygen, right? And you have a Note 10? I'm surprised it doesn't work on the Note 10. That's a real fancy phone, Skywalker. Yeah, I have a Galaxy S10 Plus, I think. I haven't tried the app, though. Um, and it just doesn't connect. I wonder if that could be a problem with Wi-Fi, too. I'm not sure. It is an app, Max. Uh, you get both the app on the PC and phone. You can do all sorts of hotkeys on it. That's pretty sweet. It's not made specifically for streaming, but it works with it, too. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, same thing with the Stream Deck. Like, you can do it with any application you want. If you do graphics, if you did audio stuff, any shortcut that the app has, you can program into there, basically. Or a media remote. Yeah, it's just, it's really just a macro for any app you use. But for me, I generally only use it for streaming. Ah, uh, here we go. No wonder there are so many stories about you at home. <laughs> You're not half bad yourself, making it here in one piece. Anyway, that's how it all went down, Hatchling. Story's over, but feel free to stay and enjoy the fire a while. Or don't. Fire's not going anywhere. Anything else you wanted? Uh, where should I explore here? That's the spirit. Anywhere is good, but you should know that space here is weird. Intensely. Ever tried throwing your probe into one of those weird seeds? See there, with this little opening, it's just big enough to launch one through. Your probe tracker will tell you the probe is in two places at once, but I don't think that's wrong exactly, because space doesn't work right in here. That seed looks small, see? But inside, it's bigger. Much bigger. I had a lot of time to think about this, and my theory is space and dark bramble kind of expands as you go through each sphere. That's why it's bigger inside of those seeds. Well, that's my theory. Keep that in mind when you're exploring dark bramble, and maybe you don't get lost inside forever. Good luck. And Nate, you have two folders in your in yours, one for streaming and one for productivity. That's perfect. Yeah, that's a good idea. And you can have different profiles on it too, which is nice. Uh, so you reached the core of Giant's Deep. How'd you do it? We haven't done it yet. Giant's Deep core, huh? That was a wild one. We did get through the counterclockwise tornado, but once we got to the electrical field, we couldn't get through. But since you're asking, I gotta assume you haven't made it down there yourself yet, right? If I tell you how, it kind of feels like cheating. Hmm. On a completely unrelated note... That sure was a big, hollow vine that crashed my ship into. Yep. Wait. Hollow vine. Is there a trick to go from here to there? <laughs> Wait. If I were you, I'd go take a walk and see where it ends. You'll want to go to the tail of this anglerfish skeleton here and look for a flickering light in the fog. That'll be my old ship. Path starts there. And yeah, where's your ship? Not far from here, as a matter of fact. If you go straight past the tail of this anglerfish skeleton here, you'll see a flickering light in the fog. Follow that, you'll find my old ship. What's left of it, anyway. And what happened to this anglerfish? Oh, the skeleton? It was like that when I got here. As far as I can tell, the anglerfish must have been chewing on the vine and eat an and eaten a seed, and then the seed grew and grew in the poor fish's stomach until this happened. Gross, huh? This skeleton was a good find. The light keeps the fish away, you know. See, they're territorial, so they mostly avoid each other. That's why I set up camp here. Oh, that's a smart idea. And shouldn't I tell ground control to come get you? Well, yeah, sure. Whenever you have the time. Frankly, I kind of like it out here. Quite peacefulish. You're a little young to understand, but it's a lot of pressure, being the best that ever was. It's been nice to have a break. And then I also want to tell him that we found something. Uh, we found a dark bramble seed on Timber Hearth. That's bad business, Hatchling. As Church will tell you if you so much as glance in Dark Bramble's direction, there used to be a fifth planet where the bramble is now. 
This infernal plant appeared at the center and kept growing and growing and growing until it shattered the planet and scattered its pieces across space. We gotta take this thing out. If we don't get that seed you found sorted like real quick like, I suspect Timber Hearth will be headed toward the same fate. And I tell you what, I tell you what, uh, the Hearthians have overcome far too much to be done in by some worthless seed. And there's a couple other things we found too. Uh, we found no my writing saying anglerfish are blind. Aha! So the blasted things do have a weakness. Meaning, my fly as fast as I can approach to dealing with them could have used a bit more thought behind it. Ah, well, at least it didn't eat me. All's well that ends well, eh, Hatchling? You made it. Okay, so on the completely unrelated note, we need to uh, see where his thing went. I guess I can bring this back. So he said, go ahead and follow this flashing light, and this will take us to his ship. Maybe has something to do with uh, Giant's Deep? I'm not sure. You mentioned this big hollow bramble here. So there's his ship. I tried in the past. You can't actually um, like do anything in there, I don't believe. Like you can't fix their ships or explore. Okay, it looks like this is the only way to go right here. I'm assuming we want to explore inside the hollow bramble. Luckily, we were able to refuel. <laughs> Without that, there's no way we could do this. Whoa! Oh, uh, what? Now, where the heck are we? Yeah, I'm still trying to go this way. I see graphics look so different on that. No, this is on Steam. I'm, I'm playing the PC version. Oh, gosh. Is this ice? The heck happened? It looks like ice. I am using an Xbox controller, but that's just because the Steam version even says we suggest using a controller. Whoa. We saw these things earlier encased in ice, I think. Trip four, entry number, I'm gonna say not one. Crashes three, boring crashes zero, personal best. Whoa, I never thought I'd see one of these beasties outside of Giant's Deep. They were always, or they were awful, awfully useful back there. Maybe a jellyfish could be useful here too. Blah, this thing tastes terrible. The outside is all rubbery and tough. Maybe that's because it ins insulates the fish's insides from getting zapped by electricity. Right. I'm going inside of the jellyfish's interior cavity to see if uh, if that tastes any better. That's gross. So he went inside of this thing, huh? Oh, there's a note with a pickaxe. Note to Feldspar. Do not eat this even if you are dying. It would be too sad if this was the last thing you ever ate in this life. I guess these jellyfish are only useful for insulation from electricity. Again, do not eat. Love fills part. Insulation? Electricity? Giants deep? Hmm? So I have to like get inside one of these things and then I can go down, I guess? Interesting. Okay, that's probably all we needed to know. Um, I don't know that there's any other way out of here. Maybe I should take this out. Gabbro. Wait, is Gabbro on? This planet on... I, I kind of forget which planet each person's from. Maybe Gabbro's from this planet. Uh, the one I've been trying to get to. And where am I exactly? I don't think this is actually Dark Bramble anymore, is it? Maybe it is. 
But all of a sudden we got gravity, which is weird. It makes me think it's not Dark Bramble. Hmm. Okay, well now with that information, I kind of want to do a meditate and then go get inside of Giant's Deep using a jellyfish. But maybe before we do that, we go talk to uh, our buddy. I don't know if I have anything interesting to tell him now, maybe. Okay, so this is where we came in. We just gotta listen for his harmonica. There we go. Oh no, we're almost out of time. I don't know if there's anything we could tell him. Uh, I found something. Oh, I found the frozen jellyfish near your ship. Ah, so the old thing is still there, is it? That's where I first camped out after the crash, you know. It was pretty cozy inside. It does lack structural integrity, and the indomitable spirit of the camp made in the shelter of the very bones of the species that try to eat you, I suppose. Still, very cozy. Okay, well, this will be a good spot to, uh, I guess, just let it happen. It's fun to listen to the uh, sounds of the game. Now, also, um, Hot Rod, if you're curious, like, what the game looks like. In the options, I think we have everything turned up. I don't know if that makes much difference, but based on what you were playing at before. Um, let's go ahead... Yeah, let's try to do a marshmallow really quick. There we go. As we're about to die, Hasifa. <laughs> oh, it's getting golden. Almost perfect. Almost perfect. Me, personally, that's about where I'd stop right now. Oh, crap. Too late. Yeah, we're just going to watch the world burn anyway. I'm just curious, where does it even come from? I'm not sure. Oh, a lot of areas is untextured. Hot Rod, I actually thought that was just like the uh, style of the game. I don't know. Kind of reminded me of Firewatch. Like Firewatch had a lot of that like minimalist texture work. A lot of like just flat textures, just because it, it looks neat. That was actually the first thing I thought about when I started this game. It's like, oh, this kind of reminds me of Firewatch a little bit, just in style. <laughs> way more complicated of a game than that, of course, in every other way. All right, now we're going off to Giant's Deep and get to that center core. So we got four major places, uh, the Vessel, Giant's Deep Core, Comet, and Sun Station. Let's do Giant's Deep Core since that's what we were just learning about. Seems like a natural flow. Okay, where is my thing? Here we go. And I think Giant Steep is actually pretty close to us when we take off. Yeah, it's like right there. That's handy. <laughs> Very useful. Oh, that's really cool, Hot Rod. I'm guessing that must have been like a, uh, a really high-end backer reward, right? If it's just for one backer. You know what's kind of funny to me, Hasifa, is I'm almost like surprised that this game actually has a ending, I suppose. Like it almost seems like a game that isn't really going to have like a like a proper credit sequence. It's just like you're done when you want to be done. Okay, so I need to look for 
one of these that's going counterclockwise, which is actually this one right here. All of them are going clockwise, except for this one. So we're going to fly through this one. This gets us underwater. Now we have to use a jellyfish somehow, but they're all electrical too. I'm assuming that I have to get out of my ship, but what if I just kind of bump it with this? What does this do? I want to say, yeah, that zaps me. <laughs> I did that before. Oh, that one is almost touching the ground. Maybe we can use this to kind of pass through. Let's see if we can use this. Nope. Uh, oh, he passed through already. Darn it. I think we missed that one. Do they go up and down? I'm not sure. Yeah, this one looks like he's coming back up now. That's what that red light is. Okay. So maybe when there's a red light going on. Now, right now. Maybe we can pass through. Nope. That hurts me. Maybe we fit underneath them in those tentacles? Let's see if I can get in there. Or is this going to zap me too? There we go. Okay. Let's hide in here. I'm not sure if I can go any further up. I don't want to get zapped. I'm just going to try, try to hang out right in here as we go down. Here's my electrical insulation. Oh. No, you actually have to go all the way up inside of it. Okay. It's almost like it waits for you. I don't think we're through it yet. Kind of hard to tell. They move pretty slow, so it could be a little while before it actually goes underneath. Oh, I think it's getting closer. I can hear it. There we go. Okay, I think we passed through. I want to try to get out of here. Excuse me. Pardon me. Oh, ship log updated. Whoa, what is this? Oh, another one of their ships. Oh, I bet we could have fired a scout. Yeah. I never actually did try firing a scout into the water, I don't think, before. I should break out the distress signal, huh? Is this a distress signal thing? Maybe it's not. Okay, let's try to fit through here. Get in the ship, open up the door. Is this the same thing that we saw? Oh gosh. Um, this looks very familiar. Yeah, we saw... Have I been here before? <laughs> um, I was just trying to... Oh, crap. Screwed up my gravity. I was going to say, this kind of reminds me of... Um, I think of what planet we saw this from. But yeah, this shows like the whole thing of the solar system. We're able to like show each planet one at a time. Here we go. Receiving data from probe 9318116. Visualizing current trajectory of probe 9318116. Yeah, let's move it to the next one. 
So I don't think this is exactly the same as that other one we did that looked like this. It's so cool how those things like shrink and kind of show you stuff. Oh. Oh, that looks like uh, that drawing we're always seeing everywhere, doesn't it? Holy cow. <laughs> that looked pretty cool. Retrieving previous launch data from Ash Twin. Total number of probes launched? Oh, 9,318,116. Deep space anomaly matching all known criteria for the eye of the universe found by probe. 9,318,054. So, they were looking for the eye. That's what uh, brought them here. What is that? Retrieving stored coordinates from Ash Twin. Displaying coordinates for the eye of the universe. Boom, there we go. <laughs> That's the coordinates. <laughs> I'm guessing our character can read that because I cannot. Okay, that was all of those, but there's some stuff up there I want to see. So let's, where's that little gravity thing? Here we go. Go ahead and change that. Ash Twin Projection Stone. So this is going to send us to that Ash Twin. We've seen this before. I don't understand this, except I had the assumption that we want to light up all of these different faces. I don't know if that's the actual goal or not. I feel like I've seen this place before using one of those projection stones, but we, we never could get here, of course, yet. Uh, I have exciting news. Privet, the Ash Twin Project is almost prepared to receive the probe data from the orbital probe cannon. Raimi is adding some finishing touches here, but she'll be finished soon. Are you in the orbital probe cannon well? We are. The probe tracking module is ready to record each launch's flight trajectory and will automatically transmit all relevant data to you. Once the probe determines the location of the eye of the universe, I'll send an alert directly to you and Raimi. On the other appendage, I'm now worried about this cannon's structural integrity and its crew's moral integrity. Well, structural integrity? Yeah, there was a problem. Spoiler alert. Right, there was another one over here to grab too. What was this? The launch module. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, this was the other place I went to that looked just like this. I believe. Yeah, with that broken glass and everything, this looks familiar. Let's read what this says. Oh, and this is the station above Giant's Deep. Okay. Imagine, Privet, the probe tracking module will be the first to know the coordinates of the eye of the universe. You'll be the first to see them. I am honored and terrified. You won't ask the orbital probe cannon to use so much power that it breaks, will you? Fret not, my nervous friend. We only need to fire the probe once, anyway. And who minds if it compromises the orbital probe cannon's structural integrity slightly? I would mind, Malo, and I would mind because we won't be able to uh, be capable of receiving our probe's data if the probe tracking module is destroyed. <laughs> Who minds if we break it a little bit? Come on, <laughs> live a little. Okay, I think that's it, but let me make sure there's nothing else. Oh, there's another one of these statues that stared at me in the beginning of the game. Kind of hinting at the time mechanics. Nothing on the table. Okay, I think that's it. And do you remember what the very first thing you see uh, every reset? The very first thing. I mean, it's like a replay. You mean like all the stuff that you just did? I don't remember. Oh, dang. That the very first thing is something unique. Oh, it, that's when they shoot off the probe and it blows up. They use too much power. Yeah. 
So that was the, the probe that we explored that looks just like this. Alright, we might be done. I'll explore this area a little bit more, but... I'd imagine that was the only thing we really care about in here. Yeah, there's Gabbro at the top. Yeah, I think that was pretty much it. It was all one station before. This piece happened to fall into... Oh, okay. I was going to say, they, they looked identical, so I assumed it was two different stations. Must stop wandering so aimly. It's fun, though, just exploring, isn't it, Tajay? Oh, there is a piece over here. Let me make sure there's nothing here we care about. Almost missed this. No, I don't see anything else. Okay, we're probably done here. I'm assuming I can go ahead and reset, go back to the beginning. I think we've found everything we need to here. So we'll meditate. Unless you guys know of anything I'm missing, I don't want to do that real quick, but it seems like that's it. Oh, and you do have three little piggies now. It's time for me to sleep. Tajay, you got uh, a little farm going. Is that right? That's cool. And I 100% agree, Tajay. I definitely lose some sleep playing that game. It's so easy to want to finish a task and you just keep going and going and going and going. And yeah, last night I stayed up way too late trying to build our new building. And it's just, nope, got to quit. Got to go to bed, John. We got the main things here? Okay, good. It wasn't the hardest thing to get back there, but I'd rather not do it again. All right, so then you said there was, I think, more in the Sunless City. Um, oh, next is the Warp Towers. So I'm guessing we probably are down to like the last hour or two. Would you say that's probably true, Asifa? This might be a good stopping point because I don't think I have enough time to actually beat the game tonight or get to the ending, the credits. Wherever is a good stopping point, I suppose. So we probably have enough to do a bit into the next stream, and then we'll start a brand new game after that, because Thursday is going to be our long stream. So we'll have time to do this and start a brand new one and get pretty far in that, too. The next stream should be enough, especially if it's a long one. Okay, sweet. So this is probably a good stopping point, I think. Let's go ahead. Actually, before we do that, I want to check our ship just to kind of see what our computer log looks like. What I'm thinking we might do, and I'm not 100% sure, but they keep talking about, you know, resetting 22 minutes, things like that, and the probe gets destroyed at the very beginning. What would be cool is if we can go back further in time and get there before they shoot off that probe. What they're doing with the probe might also be setting off the sun, but I'm not sure. Maybe that's why it's always resetting to that same point when the probe goes off. Or the cannon, sorry, not probe. Oh, and check out your diamond painting on Discord. You were great company while I finished. Oh, I'm happy to be, Phantasma. Nice. Yeah, look how much of this is completed. We've done quite a bit. We're missing most everything from this. This is that, what do they call it? The Wanderer? That, that little comet? That's where we need to go next as well. So let's go back to map mode. So the main places is going to be here. The White Hole Station, I think. The interloper. We have to find a way inside of this place. And, uh... I think you mentioned something about the sun station, right? I don't even think I've been to the sun station, have I? Oh, Black Hole Forge. We haven't been there either. 
So for future references, two places for backstory and the other two places for main story. Okay, yeah, I haven't been there yet. And it is a stormtrooper phantasma, but you call it my journey towards carpal tunnel. Oh, no. Hey, at least you got a good name for it. It's, it's pretty well descriptive. Yeah, so there's still something little at the Sunless City. I'm not sure what I missed there. But I went there so many times, I don't know. Oh, in the Sun Station. Here it is. Oh, you know what? I remember seeing it one time. I mentioned it, but I never tried going there. I remember I was going to Ash Twin, and I'm like, hold on, was there something in front of the sun? <laughs> I don't want to go that close, but we have to. I think we did everything at the Quantum Moon. Cool. Yeah, we made a lot of good progress today, guys. Nice. All right. Time to call it. 